Hello, hello, hello. Mic check. We are live. Welcome, everybody. It is day, it is game 12, day 12, I guess, of Nancy Drew live PC games. So, yeah. Can everybody hear me? Mic check. Glad to see you guys. I apologize for the issues with the chat before. Hi, Salt Mountain. I apologize to anybody who saw the um, thing go up for... Oh, good. Everybody can hear me. Hi, Xander. Yeah, I apologize uh, for uh, psyching everybody out earlier. <laughs> um, the I messed up. Hey, Ellery. Hey, Cameron. Um, yeah, so I messed up when I was setting up this stream. I thought I had clicked 6 p.m. and somehow it said, nope, 12 p.m. Or like 12.30 or whatever it hit. So like it just went to like this next time slot. And so <laughs> I look and everybody's like, hey, where are you? And I was like, what do you mean? We're not going live for like another five hours. And I was like, oh, no. So I'm so sorry. Hey, Noah, welcome. So sorry for the fake out. We are here now and it's going to be fun. We're playing Nancy Drew's Secret of the Old Clock. I have food here, by the way. I hope nobody minds if I eat on camera. I don't know if that's weird or not. Hey, Chris. Are you close? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, my God. It was. Oh, my gosh. It's always something with me and live streaming. I'm just like one of these days I'm going to get good at live streaming. But that day is not today and it probably will not be tomorrow either. And that's OK. <laughs> um, oh, you're testing out the cake recipe. Yay. Oh my god, please update me. I'm going to... I want to try... I'm going to make that video. I'm planning on making it, and I'm planning on... We haven't gotten to the to the game yet, but there's another baking uh, challenge in another game coming up soon. Um, and I want to try the recipe from that, too. And we're going to do it as a little test run on the channel. Um, and if you guys like it, you know, maybe uh, chesting uh, fictional recipes from Nostalgic Media could be like a side series. Hey, Miss Firing, welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys. My review of Jurassic World Dominion, it was good. Good, I'm glad you had fun. Uh, I was wondering if you were going to update us on, on what you thought. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get started in just a second. Good morning to all of my viewers in Australia. I love that we have viewers from around the world. It, it makes it, the world feel like a cozy small little community and i love that um yeah so last night uh i love that the chat was accidentally spot on from the very beginning of the game about who the bad guy was that was hilarious just after eight on sunday yeah it is 6 5 p.m on saturday here in the uk or the uk i'm not in the uk in atlanta georgia why did i say uk because the last game took place in the uk um <laughs> yeah so that was really cool wanting someone to make the abominations from clam shack from scooby-doo mystery incorporated i need to know the clam ice cream to Ooh, see we might have started we might have uh, created a monster but i love this i'm here for this <laughs> i think that could be a really fun um series because like um you know there's so many like recipes from classic movies and TV shows, and I'm like, is that good? I'm like, would that work? Like the spaghetti tacos from iCarly. That'd be kind of fun and easier. Same room as directors afterwards, and a bunch of the scenes made total sense. Yeah, Doc, um, Doctor Strange is very Sam Raimi. Very, very Sam Raimi. Um, <laughs> screams towards this guy in anger. Jane! Yes. Uh... 305 in Sacramento. Hello from Sacramento. Or hello to Sacramento, I guess. Clams. Yeah, we're we're a little bit um afraid of clams still here. Uh we still haven't uh recovered fully, I don't think. You really want it to be validated in our design. The fact that the entire chat was like, this cartoon child is the worst, and we're sticking with that, and then it turned out that everybody was right. It was so funny. So Cameron, if you don't care about spoilers for the game, I assume you don't. 
Uh, Jane was the culprit, and everybody accidentally guessed it, and it was hilarious. And oh my god, it was so funny. Um, because when I I knew that that end c- scene was coming, so when I got us there and we got to the cut scene, I just sat back. And you can see me when you watch back the VOD just smiling at chat because chat's going crazy out of the corner of my eye. Just like, no way. (laughs) Nancy should have left her in the metal box at the end of the game. Yeah, Nancy's like, we can't let a child. She's a child. We got to get her out and then tell her parent. So like, that's what Nancy did. We were doing humor, but our humor was right. Yeah. So the crime of that game was that the girl, Lin- the lady Linda, the-, the stepmother, thought she was very sick and turning into a werewolf. And it turned out that her stepdaughter was putting allergy meds in her food and also hair um, hair growth cream on in her moisturizer. And it was like a big psychosomatic like mind fuck. And it was really, and it's really messed up when you think about it for more than like two seconds. I mean, it's messed up if you think about it for any matter of time. I was convinced it wasn't Jane because it seemed so weird, but it was. I know. They really were like, are we going to make a child the bad guy? And they did. Really hope the game has another time. I'm trying to think. There aren't that many children in Nancy Drew games. I'll have to think about it. Uh, Because she wanted her to break up with her dad so that her parents, her, her mom and her dad could get back together. Uh, it was like a reverse parent trap situation, I guess. Or like evil parent trap. The details for that game was really odd to think you can kill. Yeah, so we didn't even bother with that because I'm not sure why you would, but you have to, I think it would be when you're playing Lulu's favorite game. Uh, at some point, she's going to want you to start making uh, cakes for her. And if you do it wrong, you can just straight up kill the parrot and need a second chance, which is very morbid, but we didn't even bother with it. Munching on leftover popcorn. I'm telling you, movie popcorn is good. I said this last night. It was, it's so good. I don't know why it's so good, but it just is. Jane should come back in a later game to seek out revenge. As an adult, like adult Jane, and we don't recognize her because she's all grown up. Hey, hey, Laser. Welcome. more that it was an option yeah, yeah yeah yeah. i was glad to avoid the possibility you know i don't like even when uh fictional animals get hurt or anything so that in universe jane was actually just wasting nancy's time with those games like it was her actual will yes yeah yeah the games felt the her games make a lot more sense now right she was wasting our time so that we wouldn't solve the mystery that's why she was all obsessed with us we thought we had a fan Movie popcorn drowned in that cheap butter is just so good. It is. It just is. Na- Jane ages, but Nancy stays 19. Yes. And then they're both 19. And they're like, how? How does this happen? Uh, but today we're playing game number 12. Nancy drew secret of the old clock. A couple things about it. Uh, this. Yeah. Butter substitute. Um, Ash Ketchum logic. Yes. So, yeah, no, so we are playing Secret of the Old Clock. Secret of the Old Clock is technically based on the first ever book about Nancy, of Nancy Drew from the series. Um, it was, they released this game uh, for the 75th anniversary of Nancy Drew as a character. Felt really good to be validated my hatred of Jane. Yeah, video game logic, yes. Um, and so this game, so this game takes elements from the first book but also two other books in the series to throw you for a loop so if you've read the book uh you do not really know what's gonna happen um gasp does that mean we're gonna be jeff no they cut jeff jeff has been cut i would have loved if they kept the scene where nancy gets locked in a closet and jeff has to help her but alas we do not get jeff back nancy is a time traveling vampire James be the same age would be just fine. Yeah, so that's the other thing about this game. This game, uh, it takes place in 1930 because it's a big anniversary thing for Nancy Drew. Don't think about it for more than like two seconds. Nancy's just going to be like 19, but in 1930. And then we're going to go back to modern times after the, this and we're never going to speak about it again. <laughs> like, it's just going to, there's not going to be no explanation. I know we were robbed of Jeff. Jeff was hilarious. 
Uh, so yeah, so that's what we're doing tonight. I'm going to get the game fired up in just a second. I wanted to give everybody a second to get in because I know we're starting uh, earlier. Because um, the games are getting a little longer. <laughs> Nancy Drew's grandma is Nancy Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, it's a paradox. Don't think about it. Uh, so leave it in the contract. So amnesia that exists. Yeah, it's more like she's just randomly time traveling and she doesn't, it doesn't phase her. Like, it's, it's normal. Um, it's not canon. Uh, technically it is because later on we find a little scrapbook where she scrapbooked about all of her adventures and old clock is in there. So figure that one out. <laughs> um, I've been trying to think about it since I was 10 years old or whenever I played the game for the first time. Nancy's just a time travel? Maybe. Yeah. The game is just Nancy's brief psychotic break due to the stress of crime solving. Maybe. That's a, that's a dark way to look at it, but maybe. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, we should be good to go. Yes, I'm going to make sure that we're actually looking at the game today instead of forgetting like I did last night. So that was fun. Um, there we go. Namni Nancy is omnipresent. Yes, yes, she is. She is omnipresent. Um, random piece of supernatural time traveler and nothing like it happens again. Yes, exactly that. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Nancy's version of Ash's coma. That, I remember hearing about that for the first time that like fan theory and it made me so sad um nancy's secretly the most powerful being in the universe yes only other power to match her is shaggy yes welcome exactly to my latest that. case the secret of the old clock to start choose junior or senior detective if you're new to adventure games or need some help click on tutorials all right senior detective let's go the year 1930 the place the road to titusville where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily is a car that waits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. No, the second chances do not penalize us at all. It's just a way for them to have fun death scenes so that you can mess up without actually uh, scarring a child for life for thinking that they killed Nancy Drew. Um, this was made in 2005. This was the 75th anniversary of Nancy Drew. So for that, yes, yeah, Spunky. We're going to hear a lot of 1930s lingo. For the anniversary, they did this game based in the correct time, based off of the first book. And also, The Lilac Inn is another book. There's also some elements of The Hidden Staircase. So it was just a big uh, Easter egg game for everybody. The narration is coming out of Nancy's car radio. Yes, I love the I love the old timey narrator. So let's go inside. Hello. Well, hello. I'll bet hey. my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns eighteen. Then she's on her own. Mmm. It smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from Aww. all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. Uh, yeah, later on in the game, you can do extra tasks to get, like, uh, awards at the end of the game, but they don't penalize you for needing the second chance. She dresses like your mom all. <laughs> Side point. I remember driving in 1930. Yes, Nancy Drew was very, like, feminist for 1930. We we take it for granted now, but, um, yeah, she was Is great. Is it okay that I'm here? Don't get me wrong. She can invite anybody here she wants. 
It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then Aww. she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Emily's father... Died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Aww. Anyway, I could That would be World no. War I, I wouldn't it? Wow. Friends for. I just wish I knew how to help Emily. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. <laughs> she's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go dumb on Dora. Up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. All right, all right. Okay, so this is Emily's guardian, and Emily needs our help. We don't know why. I love that the chat thinks that the first person we meet is the bad guy every time. It's so funny. Yes, Nancy would be great in um, Jurassic Park. She would kick ass. You had to buy another copy of the game just to make us. That would be terrible. Someone says the war, they mean big budget sequel. <laughs> Pretty sure she's referencing the first world war because the second world war has not happened yet in this time period. All right, Emily, there's Emily. Nancy, hi, welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, I lost I don't my actually know when Nancy goes ago. public domain, but I, I would love to know. Feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor. A big favor. You and your dad? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh. What's wrong? It's an AU. I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. Yeah, Excuse no one. Me, I'd like you to take it home with you and put Oh, there's going to be a lot of outdated it's slang. Beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was There's going to be a lot of that. Room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. Yeah. Uh What about your guardian? Can't she yeah, take very it? jarring close-up. Oh, I don't want her to know I'm doing this, so don't tell her, all right? See, strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What happened? What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here. All right, so two minutes in, and the lilac in is about to burn to the ground. This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. Yikes. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. That was very crunchy. We're started off to a great start. Not as extreme as the book, but still pretty extreme. Will insurance cover the damage? I asked the fire chief the same thing. He said there could be a problem. What kind of problem? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark, and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky, and that's when times are good. She did smile. Noel hearing the kitchen was on fire. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person who used the stove. Uh-oh. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset. 
but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Annoying. Excuse me. Oh my god, what now? Poor Nancy's like up the stairs and down the stairs and up the stairs. My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Detailed face with the less detailed hair, yes. Back when payphones rang, lol, yeah. Yeah, so, um... The day that Nancy Drew goes in the public domain, don't know when that'll be, but when it does, uh, your girl is gonna be making her own Nancy Drew movie. You know that, right? You mean this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say, but I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was Yeah, they left the fault. jewels behind. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn, I wish mom were still here. I wish Josiah mm -hmm. Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Ooh, call back to the Josiah book. Crowley. He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us. Nancy Drew in the case of the copyright claim, pause. yes. And afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. I know, they forgot the jewelry. Um... Maybe he didn't leave you Just like what? because he didn't have anything. <laughs> Oh, he didn't act like it, but he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Oh. He went to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. Yes, once Nancy Drew's public domain, the fandom is going to go nuts, and I'm excited for that time. How did Josiah Crowley know him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he uh, Richard Topham is in this game. My great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him. And he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. Paranormal powers, to get yep. Our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing. It just wasn't like him. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Was your mother's jewelry... Trying not to make a mess, but I'm just making Gosh, it worse. I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer. I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries yeah. hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. Red. Runs the main the red, the red um, fan fiction is going to be off the chain. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew. Game's it, making sure we remember all of the wars. Hang on. I'm trying not to have a situation. Here we go. Continuing I'll on. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. I won't. Hmm. You have said that. The King Kong uh, novel is in the public domain. That's cool. Hey, it's this, the music from the last game in 1930s form. <laughs> Situation is a good idea. Oh, 
I didn't know it was going to stop that abruptly. But we will meet some of these other people in a second. Excuse me. Omar, I don't know how to pronounce that last name, and I do not want to pronounce it wrong. Read this pretty soon. This read this, and pretty soon this fellow will be your favorite poet too. Your pal Josiah. So this is a book of poetry from Josiah Crowley to uh, her mother. That's cute. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... She never got the chance. Oh, That's sad. Okay. Let's see. Keep out. Okay. So? Is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. My grandma had one just like that, too. I think she technically still has it. I'll have to ask her. The mom is passed away. Her mom is... Go upstairs during her mom is no longer with caused? us. Very sad. No, you mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't Nancy Drew versus fire, Nancy Drew from the are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck. Yeah, the hair, door. the hair is Are very unfortunate. That fire on purpose to distract us? They're about two games away from uh, getting a new art director, and I think I can technically see why. It's possible, don't you think? But I'm the only one who knew she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. It's like Mama faked her death. When she was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry, it's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Yeah, the old-timey slang, uh, kind of, um... Is that your it kind of starts to wash over you after a second. My old rust bucket's parked out back where nobody will see it. Be nice to buy something decent, but last time I checked, my last name was Willoughby, not Rockefeller. Isn't it kind of just nice to have a car, period, in 1930? Well, I feel like not everybody had a car in 1930. Don't take any wooden nickels. All right, I won't. All right, let's see. I'm going to explore this little side room first. Sign language become ho hobo sign language becoming widespread. Interesting. Talk about an outdated term. All right, so here's a, a shorthand for that. Like magazine. Yeah, she's like, oh, my car is trash. And it's like, but you have a car. Like, in the middle of the Depression? Most people didn't have a car. Or a lot of people didn't have a car, I'd say. Nice to have one. Yeah, as opposed to Life Magazine-like. I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, just because slang existed, it doesn't mean we're, we're talking like that every second of every day. But, you know. Probably they are using the slang in the wrong context half of the time. Oh, look at that. We have a puzzle. And it's in an old clock. Whoever would have guessed. Oh, God. Everybody knows I'm bad at these puzzles. Okay, hang on. Literally just this one is the bane of my existence. Hang on. Oop, I know how to I know how to fix it, I think. No, because then it's gonna hang on. Hmm. Urban. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The Great Depression was a very hard time to be alive, so. There will be movies that take place in- yeah. Yep, yep, yep. They're gonna- yeah. They're just gonna constantly say sus when it's a period movie about the- about 2020. And it's gonna be awful. 
All right, what did I do? How did I already make such a grave error? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be so funny when uh, period movies are um, something that we will remember as an older, uh, as the younger generation. I mean, that's going to be very, very funny, I think. Okay, literally just that one is the bane of my existence. How has this happened to me? Oh, no, okay. All right, let's try this. Yep, that's better. I did it. I figured it out. Wonder what this mirror is doing in here. I don't know, but I had to solve a puzzle for it, so I'm going to take it. Let's start a save file just in case. It's a cuckoo clock. What's this? I have to pay money to play this game. I have $3.50. I'm gonna do this later. I don't feel like paying money to play a game right now. It will be something when that day comes. Uh, okay, here's the coin phone. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Hey, Paul. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville okay. The car ran like a top. It ought to. That's a fine car. We finally get to talk well, to our dad. I was told that Daddy Drew, to yeah. I need to get some documents from a, a very underrated character who supports his daughter area, in her feminist excursions into crime sure. solving. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for tubby telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. All right. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Don't give me Remember a dad lecture, Dad. And get gas when you're low, so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. I know, a real yes, human dad. phone operator. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare. And then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? Does anybody remember when I did that video like a few months ago about the um the 1940s uh tutorial on how to like install and use your rotary phone like when rotary phones were the new now. thing that was right, so funny. In the meantime, I know, I know. Yep, Pick first time talking to the dad. That's my girl. Goodbye, dad. Bye-bye. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? I actually want to talk to Carson Drew again, but Hi, let's call Bess and George. Marvin at KL54468. Just a second. The uh, Richard Topham is Girl, in this one, but he does not have a family. He is, um, so how's the lilac in? he's oh, a strange. psychic. Why? Because of Emily? Well, yes. Hi, Nancy. Is that yeah, ramblings know? about car maintenance is a very dad thing. Uh, teenage 1930s problems. It would be so nice to have two phones in this house. We don't even have a telephone at our house. So quit griping. So Nancy, what's the scoop? Yeah. Well, I talked to Emily Crandall. Well, I talked to Emily Crandall. Bess oh. was telling me that okay. you don't really know her. She said it well. twice. Well, Bess and I just know her through Helen Corning. The last time I saw her was at Helen's. Shout out to Helen birthday. Corning. I saw her last year at Helen's recital. Hello. Yeah, that You're video was so much fun to make now. because it was just so, like, old-timey. But we just got on. Then it should be no problem for you to get off. Just give us one the more The 1930s bickering, now, yes. Please. Oh, all right. You have one more minute. Go on, Nancy. What were you saying? Just that I... Shh. Wait a minute. Mrs. Farthingham? 
Would you mind hanging up? All clear. Oh, how I wish we didn't have to share a phone line with her. Just be grateful you have a phone, Bess. Some jewels were stolen out of Emily's room. This yeah, party lines. So glad we don't do those anymore. The kitchen. Destroy the stove? You mean they can't bake any more cherry pies? Not for a while. Emily's worried that she may have to sell the inn. Is that bad? I mean, she's only 17. Yeah, party lines are hilarious. Yeah, Carson Drew is a very dad dad, and I love that. What's everybody's favorite pie, by the way, since we're going to talk a good deal about pies? I'm more of a cake person, personally, but I do love derby pie. It's like a chocolate pie. I think she'd like to hang on to it because her mom would have wanted her to. I sure wouldn't want to be saddled with something like that. Even if apple pie, apple pie is good. Pie you could eat? I hadn't thought of it that way. Helping run the inn is all she's ever known. Oh, Noah, yeah, oh, that, still, that video oh, was I so insane. Ooh, right make a great now. homemade derby no, pie. That's amazing. Or the next call I make will be to your father. Pumpkin pie, oh, chocolate man. cream pie. Those are That's good, right. too. I'll call you later. And I'll thank you. I can't eat pecan pie because I'm allergic, oh, but I hear it's good. <laughs> meat pie. I've never had a meat pie. Yeah, well, hang up and be quick about it. Bye, Nancy. Talk to you soon. Speaking of pies. Pies. That's the lilac in specialty. I will check out Wilkins Coffee commercials. Are those the ones that Drew Gooden talked about briefly? Because if so, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I'm not a big pie person. I prefer cake, but if it's going to be pie, I like I will eat anything that has chocolate in it. Coconut cream pie is good, too. All right, let's go down. Let's go next door. Oh! Oh! Got it. Looks like someone recently had a key that appraised. was way too stressful. Okay. Random uh, key appraisal receipt. Uh. I don't understand how people hate icing, either. Icing is the best. Uh, what's over here? Oh, a miniature golf course. Swell. Oh, great. I remember playing golf. I'm bad at golf. This is gonna be terrible. This might be clamming all over again. Alright, so this is where Josiah used to live. It is now where Richard Topham lives. It's over here. Can I turn this way? Oh. This is a little carriage house, and I don't know how to get it open. Alright. Ooh, pumpkin pie with chocolate whipped cream. Yeah, cheesecake is more like a pie, and it's very good. Yeah, I'm not big on sweet potato, or honestly pumpkin, just because I'm not big on, like, cinnamon. But that's just me. I'm weird about it. Find the toy mouse and give okay. it to Yuri, would you I... please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates oh. strangers. All right. Yuri. Aw. It's a little cat. All right. Let me find the thing. Let me find his toy. Where would it be? Knowing a cat, it's probably under something. Here it is. Lose their shit in the dumbest places. Your pet owner has knows what it's like to fish a toy out for your pet. Ugly. Oh, don't. The cat did it. <laughs> Doors were cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's cute in his own little way. <laughs> Eats a pie top someone. Oh. In its own charming cat way, yes. How nice of you to drop by. And thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. The cat's name is Yuri, I'm pretty sure. How did you know who I was? 
If one is to teach others how to develop and use their paranormal gifts, it's only logical that one must possess such gifts oneself. Does that mean you can read minds or tell the future or... Already exactly? hate him. The paranormal includes telepathy or communicating by sending and you receiving little demon. thoughts, extrasensory perception or perceiving that which cannot physically be seen or heard, and psychokinesis. All right, that's a lot of words. Energy to reshape whole lot of words. Objects. When I walked in just now, it looked and right here, like officer. a trance or something. A spiffy silver fox, yes. To make these spoons he does have good hair. Using nothing but as far as this game goes, I mean. Energy. Have you ever focused sunlight through a magnifying glass until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You see, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations. My thoughts. He is a snob. Focus them until they're a beam of you know how he's just like, um, and transforms you know how I was saying last night Nigel is a know-it-all and I, it makes me angry because he's mean to Nancy the whole time? Topham is this game's that character. And you can actually make objects move? Yes. Well, on occasion. As I tell my students, increasing one's rate of success is simply a matter of practice. I wait to see if we get the boot. Does everyone have paranormal powers? To some degree, yes. The goal of the Topham School for the Study and Development of Paranormal Powers is to enable... Suit is very 1930s. I guess his hair I take them through can definitely be uh, seen as 90s themes, but... Energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. Yeah, there's several times where these characters feel like like they look like real actors, and I'm just like, oh, that's afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far that's, too busy uh, to engage in idle conversation. Kind of uh, uncanny. Down with the topums. Yes, there's one topum, but we still hate him. You're not trying to hide something, are you, Mr. Topham? Make oil oh, con artist. So. Yeah. I discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed. The more oh, the cerebral pulsation did you just call me diminish. dumb? I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brain waves are not unexpected. He does kind of look like George Clooney. To I My see it. Waves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in His face screams if judge of a singing contest show. Yeah, I know what you, know what you mean. I know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Psychic harm. Psychic. He's worried about psychic damage. Good luck and good day. All right, so we literally have to pass a quiz before he'll talk to us. Oh, but the cat purring is such a calming sound, isn't it? All right, these are just, I don't know, brain teasers. That looks right. All wet. They're all 1930s slang. Doll up. Am I smart or what? You're very smart, Nancy. Hang on. Monarch is looking more and more valid every time. He says a mute. Yeah. Yep. Uh, double cross. I'm getting there. Which I don't think is a 1930s slang. I think we still say that. Dry up. That looks right. Yeah, double cross. Uh, double cross, yeah. Oh, this is my favorite one. I'll let the chat, I'll let the chat handle this one. Yes, big cheese, my favorite. <laughs> Whoops, what was that? Big cheese. Am I smart or what? Yeah. I love that Can that's his test. That you have the correct solution to that logic problem. Cheese, right <laughs> small cheese. Let's have a look. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? When is such a douche. You meet Josiah Crowley? Double Cross is here to while stay I for went sure. To the university for a conference, I stopped for a bite at the Lilac Inn. Since it was crowded and I was in a hurry, I agreed to share a table with an elderly gentleman who, like me, was by himself. As soon as I told Mr. Crowley who I was and what I did, well, he insisted that I give him a training session that very afternoon and was so thrilled with his progress. I feel that, Cameron. I really feel that. Him everything I knew. 
So it was his idea that you set up your school in his house? Oh, I know rumor has it that I somehow tricked him into it, that I insinuated my way into his home, but I assure you that was not the case. Were you surprised when you found out that Josiah had left you everything? Delighted, yes. Surprised, not really. Josiah was all alone, you see, surrounded by people like the Crandalls and that banker, Jim Archer. People who were nice to him only because they knew he had money. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Josiah was a man of many, many interests. I'll be right here if you have any questions. Yeah, Big Cheese is, is iconic. He does have a very punchable face. Yes, he does. Oh, I do love the cat purring, though. And oh, look at this. It's was another this clock. Everything in here was Josiah's. Clock puzzle. And it's a matching game. I love everything. Didn't I just see? Okay, never mind. I used to be good at matching games. I know, the kitty purring. He's too unlikable, I don't think he's a guy. What the shit is that? <laughs> ah. Where's the mouse head? I know there's a mouse. Yeah, there you go. That sounded violent. It was just the little mouse picture. Nope, that's not it. There we go. Alright, that wasn't too bad. These chain levels unlikable, I think it's him. Yeah, every Nancy Drew game has at least one character with a punchable face. Everyone. And this is this this one. Alright, so we get another mirror. We have two little mirrors now. Hi, kitty kitty. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Okay. 1930s robot. <laughs> yeah, the our chat did not take kindly to Jane. That was very I funny. I soon realized Josiah's mental faculties were starting to go, I'm afraid. He tended to ramble. Very little of what he wrote in there makes sense. Lest I forget. What are you when you win Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? You Jane levels what of punchable. If yes, you're the villain. <laughs> you're the villain. You? What's Gloria's middle name? Okay, what are you when you win Bard Bounce? Lock to carriage house. This is how we get into the carriage house. What are you when you win Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will par on my miniature golf course get you? What's Gloria's middle name? Okay. Oh, well, we. The is in the r rivet. Two to the right. These are all uh, clues to puzzles, in case you're wondering. Buy carousel horse from Sheldon. He was going to buy one of the haunted carousel carousel horses, guys. Nancy Drew and Skippy would be adorable. I need to do another Skippy video. Like I was just thinking about Skippy someone. the other day. Can't make out to whom. All right, so we're going to need to find his uh, trivet for later. Uh, but right now, I just care about this. What are you when you win Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will par on my miniature golf course get you? What is Gloria's middle name? Well, the poet's name is Omar. Because we already saw that book, right? So we just need to find what... Uh, Bard Bounce. What you get when you win Bard Bounce. What you get when you get par on what do you miniature do golf. These? I put them on the windshields of cars parked in the area. Great advertising. Ever put them on cars at the Lilac Inn? All the time. I've gotten quite a few. Thank you for there. screenshotting. I appreciate you. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter is not on the same level as Jane. Oh, it's a little animator thing. That's cool that they animated that. Uh. So he did buy the carousel. Look, he has a carousel from the Haunted Carousel. And he also has um, 
Rick Arlen's golf clubs? So that's interesting. Yeah, no children in this game. Uh, just a very sad teenager and a bunch of adults that are also kind of sad. <laughs> Hmm, I will- I should look into Skippy and the Haunted House, though. That'll be fun. Yeah, golf. Uh, I'm not good at the golf game, so I have a feeling that that's gonna take a hot second. <laughs> Does anybody remember the episode of uh, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody where he's- where she's like, Zack, you should be uh, practicing for band. And he's like, okay. And he puts up the triangle and he goes, ding. And then he flips two pages and he goes, ding, ding. And he goes, I'm done. The man on stage in this picture, is that Josiah? Yes, that's from a production of Aww. A Night's Dream that he directed. He looks like started. a nice old man. It closed after two nights, but he didn't care. He loved that play. I do love Midsummer Night's Dream. He called Hermia Lysander on one of the other streams the other night and it like... I, I realized what I had said afterwards, and I was just like, oh no, I'm a fake Shakespeare fan. Yes, I did a video about the Haunted Hotel Ghost in Suite 613. Um, that's a good episode. All right, uh, let's go back to the house and deal with some of the easier things first. Mostly because I'm scared of golf, I do not want to have to do it. What's cooking? Have you met Richard Topham? Yeah, I've had the displeasure of meeting that quack. Somehow he knew who I was before he even saw me. He came over while they were putting out the fire today. You, yes, he played you puck. And I was so frazzled at the time, I told him. I don't usually give that crackpot the time. Yes, new Beyond Belief video. I was going to get it out tonight, and then I finished editing it right before I came on stream. So, depending on when this stream ends, it might go up tonight or tomorrow. So, just keep an eye out. Golf is more scared of you than you are of it. Thank you. I appreciate that. See, I actually really liked Sweet Life on Deck. I don't really, like, compare the two to each other. I just kind of think about de like On Deck as a continuation of Zack and Cody. Me? I think ESP is a lot of J-U-N-K. I learned just the other day, I was watching uh, somebody's video. Shoot, I can't remember whose video it was. They were talking about Cole and Dylan Sprouse and how they actually pitched a, uh, like, a limited series for Sweet Life that would have taken place after Sweet Life on Deck that basically would have that been them taking under their wing, going back to the hotel and taking in like a, a a little boy whose dad is a single dad and he lives at the hotel and so it basically would just let it keep continuing because they wanted to make sure that they thought it was unfair that the uh crew members would lose their jobs just because they were aging out of the show and i was like oh that it's actually really sweet i wish they had made that you know? emily says josiah crowley brought it in one day and just left it said it was so guess as in him would have something to do while they waited for a table. <laughs> yeah, Breaking Bad isn't exactly in my niche, but, you know, you never know. Maybe one day. <laughs> Does the miniature golf course have Should cover Saved by the Bell, day? honestly. No, that was Josiah Crowley. That was another good one. Way I hear, he built it himself. Was That's it a Raven was another favorite of no, mine. It was just his own private little course. Can you imagine? Wish I had money to throw around like that. That is dope. He built his own miniature golf course. What was Emily's mom's middle name? Do you remember? Of course I do. It was... Oh, Piffle. It's right on the tip of my tongue. It was... It was... Ugh. It'll pop Piffle, into this huh? brain of mine one of these days. What Why the hell is Piffle? Emily? Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Um... Go ask Emily for the middle name. Nancy, what was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. Yeah, I do need to do safe by the 
Saved by the Bell. And as far as Breaking Bad, I, I've only seen the pilot because I had to study it for a script writing uh, thing that I was doing because Breaking Bad pilot is known as like one of the best pilots of all of TV. Sometimes he'd help me get par just so I could get something from the prize machine. Oh, You could win different things? You always win the same thing, just a different color. It was a, a little toy dog or something. Very cheaply made and quite forgettable, obviously. Is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, I got it open. You're the bee's knees. Aw, oh, thanks. Yeah. This poet, this is Omar. That's that's the, the poet. What poet is the cat's meow? It's because of... Uh, one of these poems. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the poet that we need to know about. Yeah, something bad is really, really good. Yeah. All right. So let's go down because we know the poet's name. We know Gloria's middle name. Let's do the bard bounce, but I'm going to save here because again, I'm gonna have to pay 10 cents to play. And if I mess up, I want to just be able to load and not have to pay an extra dime. Okay, this is the same type of puzzle as um, Treasure in the Royal Tower, that puzzle where I had to slide all the things in. Um, I, I used to know how to do this. Hang on, give me one second. figure this out. I know that the blue and the yellow need to work together somehow, and the red and the green, because they're so close. The one where Jesse takes the Adderall. Oh my god, that just unlocked a memory. For those of us that actually do take Adderall nowadays, it's even funnier. <laughs> I always think of the um, the old vine got diagnosed with cool guy syndrome. Now I take Adderall. <laughs> um, all right, what am I doing? These two, I need to use, because these will only stop when they hit something that will make them stop. So I need to make sure that before I move them, I know what I'm doing. Um, what if I move that one up? that one over. Yeah, they did cover some serious topics on Saved. Um, I know that it's like, it's like a trope of the 90s to have like the after school special, but it is really nice that like, it was really nice when TV would like teach you life lessons. I kind of miss it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right, so these two are in place, so now I just need to get the blue and the blue and the yellow and the yellow. How do I do that? I guess just do it the same way, right? If I move this over like this, move that over like that, that's lined up, and then I can use this to line this up, and then these two should also slide into place. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Keen. All right. So that's the third thing, is keen. I should be writing it down, but I'm like, I'll remember. So that's probably only going to end badly. Okay. Um, should we visit the banker or should we do golfing first? Let's go visit the banker. Hmm, that car I saw before is gone. All right, we have a driving puzzle, everybody, and it is quite something. You just click and drag. Uh, where am I going? Oh, this is where that receipt Hello. came from. Are you Mr. Waddell? So what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. 
Oh, yeah. This was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate. Had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure. Once you pay the appraisal fee... Which is... A dollar and fifty cents. Oof. Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Cool. What am I down to now? A dollar eighty-five. Great. Love that. Hello. Nineteen thirties money. Archer. Am I right? Through that door. Hello. Are you Nancy Drew? <laughs> Sounds like Emily called you. Yes, ma'am. Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name. <laughs> GTA. Nancy life. Drew in GTA 5. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market... Yeah, I love the old cars. ...after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Yeah, President Hoover wasn't a very good president from what I've heard. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know. Thank you for looking up the conversion right, of, of money. Just bring it by. Oh yeah, Paul, if you missed the beginning of the stream, we're in 1930 sorry, in this game. How can I help you? Just... It's just a thing. <laughs> it's just a thing. Uh, that they did for the 75th anniversary. Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck <laughs> into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Why did she let it lapse? She yeah, the animations have Joseph gotten Bradley smoother. would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died. Or so she thought. Paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of I his see will. some suspicion for that Mr. Banker. The person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. What am I to wait? Do you think? Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, who's my favorite president? I don't know, the one that did the well least messed up stuff, I guess. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time. Yeah, he did, was did right. sell that, uh. Oh, no. Sounded like. Like, uh, sarcasm. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when, apparently, his heart just decided it was time to stop. Oh. What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. Hell yeah. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. Yeah, I don't know much about... I don't appreciate the sarcasm. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. But Richard yeah, I don't know much about Josiah's Calvin house. Coolidge. He I don't know much about FDR, but what I've heard from him, he had some pretty socialist signature. ideals. So, like, as right on. The law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Sorry, the non-Americans are probably very bored of, with Americans talking about presidents. Maybe that's where his real will is. Topham has tried to Calvin was very eccentric, yeah. I, that, I have heard that. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there, only he wants to destroy it. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. 
How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian. No, I love sarcasm. Not yeah. well at all. Met her once or twice. Yeah, Carter a little... is a pretty, uh, Carter seems pretty dear. He just likes to, like, build houses for Habitat for Humanity. We kind of, he's kind of a, he's kind of a local legend here. What was Emily's mom like? <laughs> Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pie at the Lilacan was always Ooh, blueberry pie situation. is pretty good. It'd be nice if family could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. What's your opinion of Richard Topham? Interesting gentleman who's in an interesting line of work. Does he do business here? Yes, he does. <laughs> he does not like Richard Topham. Jane thinks he's a crackpot. He makes a living doing... Whatever it is he does. So obviously someone thinks he's the real deal. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. All right. So we're just going to snoop around his office now. Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. <laughs> he's not a very bright and shiny person, Number is he? 9, 1929. Dear Mrs... Yeah, Australia has prime ministers. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back. We should go look for that trivet because it's gonna be important. I'm pretty sure that Rolodex is from another game. Who's Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. Oh. I'm no longer suspicious of the banker since he hates Topham. Yeah, he seems like a real stickler for the rules. Did Crowley give you this cloth? Stickler. Yes. I don't know why that word was hard for me to say. Even time almost immediately. But I have the key because it I paid. Be nice to be able to open this thing. But I have the key. I have the key. Can I ask him? Because I I I paid his appraisal appraisal fee. And uh, and I want to open it. Hello again. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraise. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. He looks like so a Looney Tunes character. Right I can, I kept I can the key see it. Myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it too. All right, I don't need to I take the I'll clock. I just want to open Come it. Back anytime. He has a piggy bank. I used to have like a traditional piggy is bank. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. Oh, that's the car we saw outside the Lilac Inn. Or it looks like it anyway. Oh, it's a gear puzzle. He looks like a guess who character he does. Yeah, sweet ride. All right, how... I need to make it so that all the gears line up somehow. Let's see. Hmm. I think once I put the right gears in place, it will stay. Yep, it'll stay like that. So that'll help. So now I need a medium uh, one here because that looks like what's going to fit. And then we need a small one here. Do, do, do. Right. Right. This is not as hard as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a whole huge headache. Nope. 
<laughs> I actually don't... I don't think I've ever seen that cartoon. I need to look it up now. I was at Six Flags, and at least at Six Flags over Georgia. They do nothing... Like, when you're waiting in line, they just play Looney Tunes cartoons because they own the IP, or they have rights to the IP. So I was just like watching uh, cartoons in line and then we didn't really have a really busy day and I was almost sad because I was just like, oh, I usually watch Looney Tunes in line. Hello again. Yeah, he does kind of have a great Gatsby car. You should bully this banker into being a communist. <laughs> was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. Banker didn't do it, we should still witch you. him. Aw. Maybe he's a nice dude. He's just kind of I just wondered um, what it was doing there. You know, not Probably cool. Just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area too. I guess I'll Oh be yeah, going. this is uh family. Prohibition time, isn't it? When did Prohibition end? I was just watching a Dark History podcast about it, but I already forget. Hmm. Right, let's see, where else are we going? Uh, all right, I need to get the papers for, oh, for Dad. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more, you're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? <laughs> yes, Cameron. It is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no, it's just that my regular driver Earlier mid showed up today. Earlier mid-30s, so yeah, to I think you're right. Telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean He's you an agent of capitalism, people you? resistance, you've fair. You're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? What's I'll happening? Am I getting a job? Each time you complete a delivery. Money? I get to- I get paid. Okay, sure. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done, and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great. See you in a little while. Right, so this is how we make money in this game. We actually get a quarter for every telegram we deliver. Blenheim Nursery. Where the hell is Blenheim Nursery? So I've got to avoid potholes. Yes, I'm going to drive like a maniac. It's fine. Here we go, Blenheim. Hello. I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. Only gets like two dollars in the end. I'm yeah, but two dollars in 1930s money. So this like. This guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he. Ow! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye. Okay, so we just accidentally walked into Little Shop of Horrors, but okay, I'm gonna continue on uh and we have to watch our gas gauge because we're go going to have to um buy more gas when we run out Come back later. I'm busy. yes big cheese oh oh that's the wrong place that's the titusville telco i need the tubby telegrams um there we go. did you deliver that telegram i sure did good for you here's your money and here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice <laughs> out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. And leave it to uh oh Camp Avondale. That's a that's a thing uh calling back to the book. That's where Nancy uh got um stuck in the in the closet. Is this not nope, that's a different place. I remember it being over on this side of the map though. Yeah, leave it to the Depression era game to actually pay Nancy. Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor. Not that much, but Alice. like. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. That sounds like the voice actor who voiced uh. Uh, what's her name from Treasure in the Royal Tower? Did you deliver that I'm blanking on her name. I sure did. Good for you. Lisa. Lisa. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. Hey. Oh. 
That's a cow. That's just a cow in the road. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me. Thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet. Yeah. Don't have any money we don't we don't get to talk Wait to Jeff. Here. How about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no, thank you. Bye. We just need to bully the banker out of him <laughs> that he can be an ally. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna be here for a hot second. The games are getting longer, so no worries. One of the reasons I make sure to always leave the VODs up are because I figure if people walk away and they want to catch did themselves back up, they can. I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Yeah, right? He... Up the good work. We are wasting gas. Okay, I'm not going to do any more uh, deliveries right now. Uh, one, because I just wanted to make enough money to be able to afford uh, gas. So let me get some more gas. And then to Zippies, we're Zippy gonna go. I'm gonna go back and, and do Zippy the uh, the golfing. Fill her up. Just twenty five cents worth, please. You can deliver telegrams day and night, and you will never That'll stop delivering to a telegram. Cents. So, you Thank you, miss. we're basically else? just gonna do it anytime we need money. Gation can meet up with heads. Probably. All right. Yeah, 25 cents for gas does sound like a myth now. What's the national average? Like five or six bucks right now? I think it's just under four where I am right now. And that's honestly better than most. Yeah, the delivering telegrams is just kind of um, cathartic. When I would play this game as a kid and get stuck, I would just I would just deliver telegrams as if that was my main job. Wait, where, how do I get to the? How do I get to the? Oh, it's over here. There we go. Here's the golf. All right, I'm gonna save here. Well, actually, let me save once I get my stuff. I have to pay ten cents for every try, and I know I'm gonna need more than one try. So uh, I'm gonna save. So that if I lose, I won't have to pay more money. That's my strategy. Is it cheating? Technically. But am I going to? Yes. In this sense, I hate capitalism. <laughs> 4 dollars here, yeah. Five and a half on the West Coast, oof. And buildings if he's gas in Sims 4. Oh, I love I love building stuff, recre like recreating stuff in Sims. Another advance for the 1930s. Yeah, probably. Oh, this is a different puzzle. I don't need to do this right now. Alright, I've got six holes, and they're gonna tell me which. Uh, what par is on each of them. So if I can get par or below par, I'll win. Yeah. This is just one of these games. It reminds me of those, like, Flash games that were big back in the day, if anybody had those. Uh, but I've always been bad at them. Yep. Oh god, I'm already behind. I'm already behind par. This is gonna be... God. This is our this is gonna be a nightmare. Okay. Looks so out of place with how colorful it is. Yeah, it does. I wonder who's how who's maintaining this thing? It must be Richard Topham. Is he just like the golf master? Alright, I Caught up by one. I'm only one behind now. Great. All right. What's par here? Okay. We get to hit it into this hole, and then hit that. Okay. Mm, how do I want to do this? Yeah. These. This type of uh, golf game. I've always been bad at. Like that. 
yeah. Obviously very bad at it. Oh, God. Yep. Definitely gonna have to do this again. Hang on. Oh, great. Oh, this is gonna be a nightmare. Seven? It took seven when par was three. That's great. I love that for me. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I'm not good at um, miniature golf in real life either. God, oh no. But, um... I'm definitely not good at it in this game. All right, so even if I got a hole in one, I'm still above par, so hang on. Let me just finish this out and then try again. <laughs> oh well. It too hard. It. That thing said Tiny Town and it reminded me of Lazy Town. So we're gonna load up our game. And look at that. No money lost. Yeah, if if uh Topham wasn't so like obsessed with uh, being a jerk, he could probably uh run a great mini go mini golf course. Yeah. I think it's kind of funny that um it costs 10 cents to play when it's like a private golf course. So like did um oh boy. Here we go. Like did um Josiah like charge himself? Like how did that happen? Wonder how that worked. Oh no. Man, oh god, this is so terrible. This is gonna be golf stream for a second, guys. I apologize. <laughs> I'm very bad at this. Oh, come on. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. So, check in. How's everybody? Hopefully you're doing better than I am right now. Really? You're not gonna go in? Lame. not go in. It went over the hole. Already over par and I have two more to go. He used the golf course as a piggy bank. Maybe he did, honestly. Golf is an awful sport that we as a society outgrew. Yes, I agree. Oh god. Oh no. Oh dear. Okay. I'm just I'm just using this as a practice round now. I need it. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. Even mini golf, which is less infuriating than regular golf, is terrible. I'm 10 over par and I have one more. That was a hole in 9. Oh god. That was bad. Okay. Pinball. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. A hole in nine. The robot crab is very unsettling. I think this is going I think this is going to be the new um 
clamming, guys. This might give clamming a run for its money with how much I hate it. Oh god. I hit it too hard. Yeah, I know. Oh, horse feathers. You're gonna get the high score. Thanks. Prohibition was still happening, right? All right, let's reload. It's just like Groundhog Day, but with golf. Right, that's far. Hey, Jay. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. We are playing Nancy Drew's Secret of the Old Clock, a game that takes place in 1930. Even though Nancy, none of the other games take place in 1930, and it's just never addressed. For the 75th anniversary of Nancy Drew being a character. Oh no. Alright. Salvaged it a little bit. Oh no. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh god. Currently, I am playing mini golf and sucking at it, so that's quite the thing. Looking forward to golf with your friends. I mean, you can. I would lose every time. <laughs> It's not randomly generated. I can figure out how to win. It just uh, takes um, uh, hand-eye coordination, which I, I don't possess. Got the cutscene. Nazzy little uh, thing. I'm glad I'm not the only one that's bad at virtual mini golf. I think this little cutscene was them. Uh... Oh, nice, 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 nice. So I'm, I'm very above par here, but I'm on par with everything else. So maybe I can. I uh, know that's the famous last words. I'm just probably gonna have to do it again. But yeah, the crab is scary. I don't like the crab. Um. Yeah, this like miniature golf like this was. Big on, like, those Flash Player games back in the day. No, you son of a gun. Uh, and I was bad at it then, and I'm bad at it now. Alright, if I could get this last one in three, I would win. But that is probably unlikely. But you know what? Let's give it a try. Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, no. Never mind. Oh, that's right. There's a part two to this anyway, so that was very unlikely. I hit it too hard. I know. Carpe diem. Go through the middle of the crab. Can you go through the middle? Let me try next. I'll look next time. I hit it too hard. Uh, no, I don't know much about crabs, to be honest. I'm kind of scared of everything to do with the ocean. Yeah, the first person POV of the pool. Yeah, so the animation that they're doing in that little that little train animation, I'm pretty sure was them testing out um, stuff for the next game, because the next game is Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Uh, so I think that's what they were doing. I think they were trying to test run some of the new uh, gear.
Nice and easy. Okay. I hit it too hard. Damn. I really did hit it too hard. Oh, that's still par, though. That's still par. Okay. Not a huge catastrophe. Hmm. And now on a time travel to the 1920s. Oh my god, it would be like... I love trains, too. Hermit crabs. Yeah, I guess it is a hermit crab. That's... that's... A good point. Uh, it would, I feel like it would be a lot like, uh, if you've ever seen clips of Lenny Bruce doing stand-up, or if you've watched, uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and you, you know about that. I feel like that would be the same general vibe of George Carlin stand-up happening in the 20s. Oh, no. I definitely went one over par there. So I was terrified of Thomas the Tank Engine as a little kid, uh, and I've been meaning to cover it on the channel for a long time. That and JJ the Jet Plane, which also terrified me. Sand trap. Yeah, I hate the sand traps. The only way you can get par is if you hit the sand trap and then find your way out. I don't think you can go through. I think it's going to hit that stone if you were to just hit it straight up. Oh, no. I'm afraid of that. Oh my god, how? How are you not getting up there? Nice. It was the faces. Yeah, the faces are... They were terrifying. They terrified me. Oh no, 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 no! Oh god, okay. It was going okay, and then it went downhill. Literally. No pun intended. Nancy Drew is eventually public domain, the novel will write it. Canonize her vampirism. Yes, and please canonize her breaking up with Ned and being with, or, uh, and yeah, being with, with Frank Hardy, because, uh, I don't know about you, that's my game plan for when I uh, can make my own Nancy Drew uh, content. Oh, God. Okay, so that might be the new strat. If I hit it from the top at that angle. I hit it too hard. I know, I know. Don't judge me. Oh god. You can judge me a little bit, Nancy. Darn. Oh god. Pingu. Yeah, I remember Pingu a little. As Hermit Crab Thud. Yeah, sometimes Thomas got really real. Yeah, JJ the Jet Plane was worse than Thomas the Tank Engine. I have to agree with you on that. For as much as Thomas the Tank Engine could scare little kids, it had nothing on JJ the Jet Plane. Oh, you son of a... Something. <laughs> the thing, my thing with Ned is he's just been Nancy's boyfriend forever, but they have no chemistry. And yeah, I'm a little hard on him. And it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of not. I do think she's better with uh, Frank Hardy. Which was briefly a thing in several parts of the media. <laughs> Everything is canon or nothing is. The Nancy cinematic Drewniverse?
Yeah, Thomas is is a classic. I just it's just the I always had an uncanny valley thing with the faces. <laughs> There's truth in every joke. Yeah. I don't know. I never understood Ned. I hit it too hard. How is that possible, Nancy? <sighs> Yeah, that's good. I know some people weren't scared of it, and that makes me happy. Uh, Thomas the Tank Engine theme park? That's cool. The red might be a little old for Nancy. Turn Frank forever. Ned can end up with Joe Hardy, maybe. Honestly, I ship it. I don't hate Ned, I just don't think he should be with Nancy. Oh, I was afraid it was gonna do that. I... damn. Okay. Yeah, I heard that Ringo Starr was the narrator in uh, that version. George Carlin was the narrator uh, in the U.S. version, which was also iconic. Whoops. Well, that didn't work exactly the way that I wanted it to, but whoops. We're going to be close, but we're still going to lose. I hit it you, know too how, hard. you know how it is. I hit it, too hard. it was off by one. That's so painful. Sorry, I hope I'm not like yelling in everybody's ears. Yeah, the narrators were different. In America, it was uh it was uh, George Carlin doing the narration. And then Ringo Starr, I guess, was the UK version. And I guess also in Australia. Oh, my cousin was obsessed with Big Comfy Couch. It was it was kind of intense. The love for Big Comfy Couch. I still need to do a video about it and dedicate it to her. World shattered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it's quite it's quite funny. It's also just funny because it, it creates this meme situation where people can line up uh, clips from George Carlin's stand-up and make it sound like it was part of Thomas the Tank Engine in case they want to, you know, ruin childhood for somebody, which is also pretty funny. All right. Nice, nice, nice. I'm not a fan of clowns now. Yeah, I've never been, like, the clown fear is not nearly as bad for me as it is for, like, say, my mother. Uh, or some people, but I definitely, uh, understand. I definitely get it. There is a creep factor. To, not every clown, but a lot of clowns. This angle is what gets me. Every time. Oh god. No, 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 don't go. Okay. That's better. I would love it if Bo Burnham uh, narrated a children's thing. You know he's writing the music for the Sesame Street movie, right? By one, yeah, it was painful. Nobody breathing, he's playing mini golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's certain situations where seeing a clown is a little more terrifying than other times. 
So far, we're not doing terribly. Except this hole is the bane of my existence. Ooh, ooh, ah! Wait, I got too below par on that one. I can do this. Okay, okay, nobody, nobody breathe. Okay, I'm good. I say completely trying to reassure myself. Oh, you son of a bitch. I did it! It's with two below! Thank you. Yeah, so the thing with, um... Yeah, you did not miss the golf. The golf took a hot second. How long have we been playing golf? It feels like forever. I think it's still happening. The Sesame Street, Bo Burnham thing. I think it got put on hold, but I think it's still happening. Yeah, welcome. We're playing putt-putt. Not particularly afraid of clowns. It's good because I'm terrified of so many other things. Yeah, there are definitely things I'm more uh, scared of than clowns, but I understand the clown fear. Wait. Wait, okay. Where do I get my thing? How do I get my thing? Looks oh, like I'm supposed to put my don't tell me I have to do it again. Do I have to? No. Do I? Did I put my scorecard in the wrong place? Do I have to do it again? God damn it. Can't this is... The links without a scorecard. Don't make me do it again. I don't want to. Well, we're gonna play golf one more time, so... Yeah, it's always something. <laughs> I appreciate the sympathy. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. Second chance. Let me try the second chance, actually, since you said that. Second chance. Nope, second chance takes me here. But that was actually a very smart thing. I'm sure there are good funny clowns out there. John Wayne Gacy was also a thing. Yes, yes he was. Golf torture. That's what you get for cheating the system. Fair. That's my karma. That's my karma. Alright. Um, uh, play mini games twice. Well, this one I don't have to play it twice. I just fucked up. I <laughs> I thought I was like trying to get my um my prize and it was like the trash which feels mean to let that be a thing yeah i thought it would save there too i don't know why it didn't but let's just keep moving forward <laughs> apologies everybody there is more to this game than golf and we will see it eventually this is definitely the new clamming though Too hard. Damn. Alright. Nobody breathe again. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, Thomas the Tank Engine and Clowns, I think, was what we were talking about. Ooh, that was nice. Why didn't I do that before? <laughs> well, then I'm not interested. Golf is the only thing I live for. Well, I'm glad you like golf, because we're going to see it again. 
this is very intricate. Did Josiah have this built or did he make this, do you think? I'm kind of sad that Nancy doesn't get to know Josiah. Golf with migraines brought to you by Nancy German Games. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, God. Okay. God. All right, we're doing okay. Oh no. We're doing slightly less than okay, but it's still okay. Oops, I'm gonna be over by one, aren't I? I know. I did it. Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. All right. Now we're fucking saving. I said it's 2020 even in mini golf. Yes. All right. So now, thank God, that is actually over. And we get a little horse. If this mini if someone murdered Josiah over the mini golf, I'd be willing to look the other way. Thank you. God bless you guys for still being in chat. Every time something goes minorly wrong in this game, I'm like, that's it. Everybody's just gonna tune out, and I don't blame them at all. <laughs> Alright, so this is what we want on golf. It's a little pony. Uh, so now I think we can open this, right? Um, what do you get when you win Bard Bounce? It's keen. It tells you you're keen. So we can put that in. Keen. Um, what poet is the cat's meow? That would be Omar. Uh, what does Parham a miniature golf course give you? It gives you a pony. My brother is, like, weirdly good at golf. He actually, uh, is, can beat it pretty much on the first try every time. And then Gloria's middle name was Lois. A horse. It'll never be Bob. It's still okay. That's going to be the title of the definitive book about 2020s. I'm glad I could coin that. It's a very, it's a very relatable mood for not just this situation. You had to play boring golf and all you got is a weaker version of a horse. Yes. Well, technically we got our answer to uh, this puzzle, which is imperative to solving the game. So that's cool. All right. We're here. Freshwater fish of the Midwest. Okay, and here's another uh, clock puzzle, but it's basically we need to find a combination that we do not have yet. But I think I know. I think I know where, where I'm going to find it. Bob enters. I miss Bob. want Bob back, too. No, he's good at, like, this, like, virtual golf, like this. He's good at this specific, like, when he plays this game, he never has trouble with the golf thing. Okay, so over here... So, this is one of those puzzles where we're going to have to guess and check what colors of golf balls are these. And it's random every time. So, 
let's just start with random the first four and then we hit go so this means that one of the if you get a little flag with no flag on it just it's just a little uh pole that means that you've got the color right but it's in the wrong place and if you have the full flag it means that you have the color right and uh the and the placement right so let's just assume that the red is right and that maybe the blue goes up here and then these two would go oh we got all of them right but they are all in the wrong place how is that possible oh it's possible because the blue one must have been the right one and the red one must be in a different place and we sell the car and buy a horse instead it's technically not a randomized puzzle. It's just a puzzle that is different. Like, you can't... If you played this game before, it'll never be like, oh, I know it's green, purple, orange, and yellow. Like, okay, two are in the right place. Let's say the blue and red... Well, yeah, let's just say for argument's sake, blue and red are right. And then we... Sw no, that can't be. Can't be right. Let's do that. Do that. Uh, okay. So these, I moved one that was wrong. So the blue one is there. These orange one, let's do red and purple up here. There we go. I did it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, this is a game that's been around for a while. Cars are just horses, but they don't have the ability to hate you. <laughs> Whoop! Oh, my render job failed on my thing. Oh no! Hang on, guys. It's telling me that the render job failed on my game. Give me one second. Or not my game, my video that's coming out. The render job failed. Yep. Just like, hey, you know that your render is, uh, messed up? <laughs> that's not hatred, that's just being neutral. Earth can't plot motive, but horses can, yeah. Yeah, apologies, guys. My computer is also rendering the new video as we speak, and it was just like, hey, just wanted to tell you, the render job failed. We try again. So I'm like, great, 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 great. I'm going to set this up to... I guess I can try to render it again, since we're it's, we're going to be on stream for a little while. We've got time. It's a Beyond Belief video, in case anybody was wondering. I'm very excited for it. Um, I am, I'm very excited for it, actually. Sorry, back to the game. Yeah, I managed to escape the void this one time. All right, the moon in the sky was once heard to say... Basically, uh, there are numbers highlighted with slightly off yellow. So one, two, four, two, eight, two, seven. You read the little poem. The moon in the sky was once heard to say, it's high time I saw this thing known as day. So the moon checked its clock and rose with the sun and before long it realized just what it had done. It's far too hot. It's far too bright here. I've made a mistake. What heat, what havoc the sun can create. I want to go back. So when dusk came again, the moon rose when it should and said, tis heaven. Very cute. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like the car, like my car also hates me too. I'm just, uh, I just intensely dislike uh, driving and being around cars, so that might have something to do with it. All 
All right. I'm glad I wrote it down because I already forgot. One, two, four, two, eight, two, seven. Why are you giving me the this creepy music? Oh no, did I I reset it? Hang on. Two eight two seven. go I hate driving per se I just hate the people's drive that's also fair I live in a city so driving is super chaotic here Nineteen thirties women can't drive joke. Unfortunately, I probably uphold the stereotype that women are terrible drivers because I personally am a terrible driver. So, you cannot uh, have me represent all of womanhood when we drive. Uh, by the way, we got another mirror, so there's little these little um, places to mount the mirrors up here. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. This is, of course, another puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before, when I lived, like, out in the country, I was much more comfortable driving. But since moving to Atlanta, it's just uh, the worst, the worst thing. This is just dominoes, by the way. It's barely a puzzle. I mean, it is, but it's just dominoes. You just have to line them up so that they all the ends have the same numbers on them when they where they touch. Driving gets a hundred percent worse when my parents are riding with me. Yeah, <laughs> there's got to be a scientific backing to that. Yeah, I'm ter- I- I can definitely say that driving is a fear of mine. I hate driving. The limit should be 25 everywhere. I need to adjust yeah. the mirror so that the light hits them just right. Oh, it's one of these puzzles. Okay. Uh, bounce that. Whoops. Off of that. I think you're supposed to do it in, like, a crisscross when it's, like, four corners like this, right? to bounce it on to this light bulb. Josiah was quite the inventor, wasn't he? They are fun. I just don't think they're that difficult to figure out. No, I like playing dominoes. I was saying it as a as a positive because it's not a super hard puzzle. Get a pilot's license and show it to your car so it gets jealous and tries harder. You know, my dad would love if I um, became a pilot uh, and was a, you know, carried on the generational uh, tradition of missing. having pilot's licenses. All right. Ham radio, guys. Remember game six with the ham radio? It's not going to be quite as difficult to uh, deal with this one. Ordered new courts from Krollmeister Crystal Company. Uh, December 9th, 1929, paid 474. Highway robbery delivery to take six weeks. Have Waddell cut the blank. He did a swell job last time. All right, so we're going to have to find that piece of quartz and then bring it to the jeweler. I've seen these symbols before. 
They were in that newspaper story about hobos. Yeah, we don't need to, we don't know how to fix this yet. Yes, quartz. Oh, driving in Boston. I, I've been, I've been to Boston. I've never uh, had to be the one driving uh, when I was there. But yeah, Boston, I'm sure is stressful to drive around. Beautiful, though. I did it to make my car jealous. Yeah. Well, my dad was very big on teaching us as a pilot, like how, you know, airplanes are the safest way to travel and not to be scared of flying and all that. So like, you know, it worked. I'm not scared of flying. I'm really not. But uh, he, my dad was also big on pointing out, you know, the it's way safer than driving in a car. So like I grew up and I think I manifested like a fear of cars. It, it kind of backfired, but also kind of worked. Hello, Miss Drew. Hello, Mr. Topham. Yeah, Domino's is a nice little reward to balance out the golf. Ten years, neither of us felt comfortable driving the master truck. Yeah, I would have done the same exact thing. Uh, when we moved into this house, I did not have to drive the truck, and uh, that I was very grateful for. I had to pack the truck, but not drive it, which is fine by me. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. Oh. Now what? Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. I still have it right here. Why? I was wondering if I could buy it from you. For my father. He loves quartz. Perhaps we can work something out. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project Riding in a train seems more dangerous. I've been, like, properly, prey. like, been on a train ride. I mean, I've, I've ridden the subway, but, like, not an actual train. So, like, that would be fun, I think. Granted that it's a yeah, passenger. The pilot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you know everything about planes and you're, uh... Is that so? You're the one dro you're the one flying it. You probably feel comfortable. Intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Bigger fear of getting lost in the airport than I do, uh, like, actually the flying part of it. And I think that comes from, yes, Amtrak is available where I live. Oh, I hate this puzzle. Hang on, I'll tell you about it in a second. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Great. Very well, let's begin. What card am I holding? So he phrases the question differently depending on what symbol he has, like subconsciously. This one. That's not right. So we're going to have to memorize. What card am I looking at? I think it's this one. You go, girl. All right. Here's another. This is which card? I'm gonna have to take notes. Uh, high level of intelligence. Answered some half baked visual puns. Yes. Even though I was summoned to fly the plane after the pilot. Oh God, that is a that is a terrifying thing. Yeah, I'm. Um. This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? No, I don't. This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? This one. Very good. All right. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? Gonna have to, because I need that quartz. Yeah, I, you know... I you bet. Hartsfield Jackson you Airport are. is literally well, the busiest airport in the world. So this is which card? So I am more afraid of getting lost in the airport than I've ever been of actually this flying. One? Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Tell me what which card is strange. Is this? this one. That's not right. Here's right? another. Tell me what card is this? This one. Star? That's not right. Oh. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? Uh, that this one? one? Wrong. Here's another. Can you tell me what card this is? 
this one? Wrong. Oh well, that was gosh. bad. Whenever he picks up a particular card, he always says the same thing. Well, you failed uh, to correctly identify... This is why I hate this puzzle. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I concentrating on? Oof. Uh... This one. That's not right. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? This one. Wrong. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one. Yes! Oh. Here's another. What card am I holding? I think it's this one. Excellent. Here's another. We're being recruited what into the act. This is. This one. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You I just can. hate this puzzle Maybe because you have to just do it well. over and over That's and over it. until you learn what they are. What am I thinking about? Um, thinking of is cross, but thinking about... Yeah, this man is Jane 2.0. This one? Yes. Oh, thinking Isn't of it? is what the star. What am I concentrating on? I'm concentrating on this one. No, try nope. again. What card am I looking at? Circle. This one. Excellent. Here's another. Can you tell me what card this I is? think I hate this more than I hate Jane's puzzles. Just gonna be real. Uh can you tell me? I cannot. This one. No, try again. What card am I looking at? The circle. This one? Very good. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. So this guy Ready thinks... Do we think Very this well, guy actually thinks he's psychic, or do you think he knows that he's full of shit, are. is my is my question. This one? That's not right. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? I think it's this one. No, try again. This is which card? Uh... This one? Incorrect. You must focus. Here's this is another. so dumb. What I hate this. this. What card is this? I don't know. This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. Can this guy's less dangerous than Jane. He has the appearance of an in... <laughs> really? I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but... But... I think it's this one. Very good. I wonder, could you yeah. tell me what card he's picking up by which question he asks me? Well, yes. you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? Yeah. Making a note. Hang on. You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. I'm going to say probably he card. believes it, but he's really just predictable. Five in a row is asking a lot of this. 20% probability, yeah. The con man are insane. Either way, he sucks. Yeah. Yeah. This is which card? I think it's this one. No, try again. Can you tell me what card this is? I think it's this one. Yes. Here's another. What card am I holding? Uh, holding is square. This one. Wonderful. Here's another. What card am I looking at? That's circle. This one. Wonderful. Here's another. Do you know what card I'm looking at? Oh. Do you know what card I'm looking at? I... This one? Don't. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall you we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. He does look like John O'Hurley. What am I thinking about? John O'Hurley was also in that show that I covered one episode of that was only got one season called Over the Top with uh, Tim Curry and Annie Potts. Uh, thinking of... Oh, thinking about... I have, a, I have a mistake, I think, in my notes. Uh, I think it's Star. This one? You go, girl. Here's another. Yep. Which card am I thinking of? Thinking of is cross. I think it's this one. Marvelous. Here's another. 
What card am I holding? Holding is square. I think when he says it that way, that means it's this square. One. Excellent. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I looking Ooh. at? Ooh. This one. Very good. You did it. Odd. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, thank you for your assistance. Shut Here's up. piece of crystal that Josiah ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But Mr. Tom, get really tired I of those really, same I mean, sound bites. You didn't really. I mean, I'm afraid it subconsciously you may have. <sighs> yes. Never mind. Just let him have it, Nancy. Maybe Just take else. the. What do you think take the crystal and go. Josiah's safe deposit box. Josiah no doubt lost it. He had a terrible memory, poor fellow. What do you think is in the safe deposit box? No, we cannot kill him yet. It's filled with the same thing as this house. Junk. <laughs> but if it's junk, why haven't I got I know, he has a very interesting well, voice. Well, I know it's silly to hang on to Josiah's things, but he was a wonderful man, you see. And I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Too sentimental for my own good, I guess. Yeah, you sure it has nothing to do with the fact that uh, you don't want to be able to find nice another will? I'm sure it was. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, Annie Potts was on Designing Women. My mom loved that show. Well, actually, I did it. There's a level of arrogance I can't help but respect. You know, when you meet people who are that douchey and arrogant, uh, you, you hate them, but there's also this part of you, or there's this part of me that's like, wow, if only I had that much confidence. I can't even imagine what it must be like to function on that level of certainty of myself. I need a motive to do it. Uh, the motive is he made me uh, guess um, cards for like three hours and I went clinically insane. He is very secure at himself. Might just be you. <laughs> no, Nancy can't commit the crime. She's here to solve the crime. Crime is wrong. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Now what? I need for you to cut a blank from this piece of quartz. No big deal. Let's see it. The blank needs to be just like the one you made before for Josiah Crowley. Like I said, no big deal. You're going to have to cough up two dollars, though. You can pay me when you pick it up. Good day. All right. I have two dollars, but I'm going to need uh, more than just the two dollars. Let's see. I'm wasting gas. Sunnybrook Farm. Where the hell is Sunnybrook Farm? We also need to go get that trivet, right? Yeah, the trivet we're gonna get here, uh, but we need to... Well, no, actually, let's do it while we're here. Save as much gas as possible. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes. Oh, no, My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Get on with it, dear. I was wondering, would it be possible for me to see the trivet you borrowed from Josiah Crowley? You may not only see it, you may have it. Once I find it, that is. Unfortunately, I've an errand to run, so I can't look for it right now. Maybe I could run the errand for you. I have a car. So I see. Or rather expensive car at that. Guilty. He could be guilty, too. Through. Go fetch my bridge cards from Miss Drakowski, and upon your return, I shall present you with that trivet. Who's Miss Drakowski? The local telephone operator. Oh. You can find her at her house, or Titusville Telco, as she insists on calling it. The switchboard is in her parlor. That's as actually kind of dope. She never entertains. I, on the other hand, am expecting company within the hour, so do hurry. Where's Sunnybrook? Oh, here's Sunnybrook. Oh, I hit a pop. Hi, I have a telegram from Miss Ross. My name's Rebecca. And I'm only 10, but I'll deliver it to her for you. I'm pretty sure this is the same voice actor who does Nancy. Cross you or anything like that. Well, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. No sweat. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. She's also Luke from, um... Uh, what am I trying to say? Professor Layton, the games...
Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Dr. Bob out at the observatory. Keep up the good work. Mm, let's get gas while I'm driving straight by the gas station. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily Zapped and Zippy service is the zippiest. I have no idea what that means. Just 25 cents worth, please. I have worse. That's true. We have a child, but please don't That'll be wish, 25 cents. Here you go. Wish uh Five Zippily. Um misfortune on the child. I don't think she did anything to us. Oh, wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Technically, you're right. That is a child. I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Dr. Bob. That would be me. Thank you. Wow, that's a big telescope. Come back after dark and I'll let you take a look. You can consider it your tip. I may just do that. Bye-bye. That couldn't have sounded more like a euphemism if it wanted to. I'm so injured. <laughs> now Sign Steel Delivered is going to be in my head. Great song. We do have a Bob. It is the wrong Bob, though. Yes. Wow, that's a big telescope. Did you that telegram? It's like I sure did. they had to know what they were doing, right? It sounds and very weird. Telegram. Deliver this to Miss Temple at Lowood Academy. Keep up the good work. Yeah, true. That child didn't hold us uh, hostage. Lowood Academy. That's literally next door. I shouldn't even be driving my car. I should be walking Hello, across the street. I've got a telegram for Miss Temple. I am she. We teachers don't get paid much, you know. I understand. Uh, did this by any chance used to be the Brewster Academy? Why, yes, it did. Thought so. Bye. I don't know what that means. That's probably a reference to something. Did you deliver? But I just telegram? don't know what. I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Dr. Ackerman out at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to pay two whole dollars for that uh, blank to be cut, Hello. so I'm gonna need to do this. We teachers don't get paid much. What the hell is happening? What's happening? Why are we doing this game? Apologies. Go back in. I shall deliver it to the good doctor. Yes, you guys get a little uh, preview of the next video. And I never do. That's okay. Bye. Yeah, sorry for that. Very, uh, very, um, very jarring, but hey, you guys get to see a little bit of the video rendering, I guess. Yeah, shout out to teachers, because teachers do not get paid enough. Did you deliver that telegram? One of the most important sure jobs in all of society, and we're just like, here's, here's barely more than minimum wage. This one's for old man Johnson out at his farm. Keep up the good work. Okay. All right, let's go get the uh, bridge card since we're close to that. Yeah. Are you Miss Jakowski? Yeah, and you are Nancy Drew. <laughs> a peek behind the video making curtain. Family. You know, at the Lilac Inn. Oh yeah, I put you through to your father, didn't I? She has the exact same voice as uh, Sharona Fleming from Monk. Wait a minute. How did you know about that? See this headset I'm wearing? I plug it in and oh, what do you know? I hear things. Look, I'm kind of pressed for time. Going to a party and it takes me a while to get dolled up. What do you need? Mrs. Sheldon asked me to pick up her bridge cards from you. Tell you what, I'll get you those cards if you drive that fancy car of yours over to the orphanage and pick up some raffle tickets from Mrs. O'Shea. Oh, good God. You should be able to unload a ton of them tonight. I'd be happy to. Good, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm coming. Yeah, Chris, if you don't mind us asking, what do you teach? 
My favorite subject in school was always uh, history and also social studies, so I'm gonna get more gas. So once I hit half a tank, Nancy's gonna yell at me. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily Zapped and Zippy service is the zippiest. Yeah, fill her up. those are my favorite subjects. Um, Just 25 cents worth, please. Creative writing. Teach middle school social studies. Cool, 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 cool. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Drive Zippily. I liked creative writing because even back then I wanted to be a writer, but I didn't, uh, I never liked uh, English because and grammar because I was bad at it. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes, my name is Nancy Drew. It's great that you teach Steven, your favorite subject. Put that down this instant. We do not run with sticks in our hands. Or in our I know Nancy's house. a people pleaser. I'm sorry. You were saying? Miss Jakowski asked me to pick up some raffle tickets. Writing is very you. cool. Oh yes, the raffle tickets. The fact of the matter is, I. Elsie, no hitting. I can't even think about those raffle tickets right now. I promised the children they'd each get a toy for going a full week without breaking anything. And I'm short five toys. Do not eat that, Clarence. Would you like me to get five toys for you? Oh, goodness, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. They can be any kind of toy at all. The children aren't the least bit picky. Of course it tastes bad, Clarence. It's a pine cone. I'd better go rinse out his mouth before. Oh, would you look at that? He's actually chewing it. You're not a squirrel, Clarence. Spit that out this instant. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like she's having a... A real hard time. Math and science. Uh, math wasn't too... Well, I shouldn't say that. Math definitely gave me some grief. Let's drop off at the bank and just see what's up over here. Uh, science was, I think, harder for me than math. But math was also Hello, pretty yeah. hard. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. Yes, shout out to teachers. All of, all of, all teachers. Okay, so we have a choice, and it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty diabolical choice. We have $2.75 right now, considering that we need $2 for the quartz to be cut so that we can, uh, continue solving puzzles, and we also need to buy gas. Uh, we have two choices. Yeah, what the hell, Clarence? Um, we can either go buy, because this... To this little pony that we that we won counts as a toy. So we can either, for 25 cents a piece, buy four more toys, or uh, we can play golf again for 10 cents a piece to win toys. <laughs> I'm gonna let the chat decide. Failed algebra in high school teachers will pass me so I won't have to deal with me again. My mom always says that that was her with her, uh, in her, her in school teachers would pass her so that they didn't have to deal with her. Old man Johnson. I was just calling him Guess Who Man. Yeah, his name is, um, Jim. Jim Archer, the banker. Are you Mr. Johnson? Maybe. Who are you? Well, my name's Nancy. The Drew. old man voice. If you are Mr. Johnson. I've got a telegram for you. Well, thank you. Hey, you want a tip? Sure. sure. Buy low, sell high. Thanks. I'll remember that. Jim Helbert. <laughs> yeah. So we can go the we can um Acquire toys, uh, capitalists, the capitalist route, uh, and we'll just have to do some more driving, or we could go back to golfing and golf for some toys. Here's your money, and here's your next telegram. Go to the railroad station and deliver this to Willie Joe. Keep up the good work. Willie Joe. How do I pull into the... Oops. Is it over here? There Hi, I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Willie Joe. Is that you? No, I'm Willie Joe's Uncle John. I see that she gets it, though. She? Oh, she damn. With a capital S. Well, bye. 
capitalists just do it. We're in America. Fair. Three and a half weeks to get through the first puzzle. First puzzle. That's not crazy. Um, some of these puzzles are really hard for me. Thank you. I, I appreciate uh, caring for my mental health. I will probably end up just buying the toys, the four that I need. I sure did. Good for you. I'm just gonna have to do some extra driving so that Nancy has enough money. Take this to Phil Connor out at Trollmeister Nails. Keep up the good work. Trollmeister Nails is close. Don't want to hit the pothole. Don't hit the pothole. I have a telegram for yeah, Phil right across Connor. the street. I'm Phil. Thank you. I got a tip for you. Here. Ow, that's a nail. That's what we make here. What? Nails. Beauty, ain't she? Uh, thanks, but no thanks, Mr. Connor. Bye. Just get stabbed with a nail? Did they not know about tetanus in 1930? They probably didn't. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one here is for Helen C. <laughs> right. Michael. I wish She's I wish driving was as easy as in this game. Because in this game, I literally just uh Where's the library? It's right here. In this game, I'm like driving on the wrong side of the road. It doesn't Sorry. matter. This telegram is for Helen C. White. Who? Helen C. White. Bill and Steve Wright. Helen C. White. Shh. Here. A telegram for Miss White. I'll give it to her. Thank you. You're welcome. What? Never mind. Shh. The dental ASMR. All right. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Mm, this one goes to Molly out at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. All right, let me go get gas. Uh, and then I'll head to the Zippy store to buy Zippy toys. Zippy service is Zippily Zapped, and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Probably new tenants existed, but not what caused it yet. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, all right, let's go find somewhere to buy toys. I think you can buy them from the general store. General store up this way. Nope, the Sunnybrook Farm. Oh, but here's Vash's Dairy. Hi, Mr. Jones. I've got a telegram here for Molly. She's in the milking shed. I'll give it to her. Anchor was right all along. I got some freshly churned butter here. That's okay. Bye. And she's just like, oh, let me put butter in my purse. We literally did that in the last game, Nancy. That's not even the weirdest thing for us. Maybe I could buy some toys for the orphans in here. Yep. A vending machine that just sells toys. I'm keen. What toys do we buy? We need four of them. Turn signals, ha! Huh. I don't think t I don't think 1930s cars had turn signals. I think you had to use like hand signals. Uh, let's see, we've got a doll, a plane, a train, a boat, a bear, and a car. Teddy and boat. All right, let's do the teddy bear. Can't get Oops. the toy without putting in money first how it works all right we have a bear Two toys down three to go Stop acting like this isn't crazy i know right not the doll okay not the doll we will not get the doll i buttered my purse once never again get the doll maybe it's haunted okay i'm seeing conflicting let's see i'll get the boat we seem to be, uh, there seems to be no issues about the boat. That makes three toys. I will get the plane for my dad. Four toys. I just need one more. It's the anniversary of... Cool. Around the twist season three is a creepy doll. That's probably what I'll end up covering when I go back to this show. <laughs> okay, get the doll, your funeral. All right, I'll get the doll. Five toys, that's all I need. Oh, I should have gotten the train. 
Sorry, I saw your message too late. We have $2.50, though. Oh, gosh, I'm driving into the very wrong way. Uh, let's go back, then. Let's get another did 25 Did you deliver cent. that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Here's one for Audrey out at Blenheim Nursery. Keep up the good right, work. That's back by the, uh, the inn, so... Let's go and, uh, deliver these toys first. Hi, do you have five toys for me? I Moo. certainly do. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a saint, you hear me? A saint. I'd better get these inside before the, the cow does disapprove of my driving. So much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, he does sound like the alligators of the last game. Oh, the raffle tickets. Are Good night, Tony. To Thank you for hanging like out. From Phelps Print Shop. Oh, I'm just taking straight to Mr. Kowski. You mean I got There's toys for orphans for Especially nothing? We have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Phelps Print Shop. Wonderful. All right. Good for you. Here's your money. Yeah, right. Well, I think Phelps Print Shop is kind of just across the street. Yep, here it is. Sorry, young lady, I'm about to close. I'm just here to pick up the raffle tickets you printed. Nancy does so sound shed. so done. Oh, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. Fishing? My brother-in-law thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. And if I do, I get his stamp collection. And if I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I'm going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets and I'll go fishing for you. Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass. Nancy can. It takes skill and muscle and brains. Bass are pretty smart. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. You better yeah, be she's right. just woken up in the 1930s for no reason. Until I get my 19-incher. You can use my gear. I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great. I'll see you later. If I'm remembering correctly, there's a, there's a Nancy Drew book that was written in the 2000s where she falls asleep and wakes up in 1930, and she's like, why the hell am I in 1930? I remember reading it as a kid. All right. First thing I need to do is bait my hook. So I think we were told that we should use minnows for the 19-inch bass on the little the little thing in the shed that now was talking about fishing. And when the bobber goes under the water, I need I'm to sorry, I don't understand bass. that reference. Or he has a car and getting paid. I'd be so annoyed that my regular timeline wasn't like that too. Yeah. Nancy Marie Eloise Drew, do not sass the poor print shop man. He hasn't earned it yet. Fair. All right, and I'm gonna shoot for that grassy area because the pamphlet also said to do that. We did not raise you to be impolite, Nancy. First try. 19 incher. Looks like 19 inches to me. <laughs> I should get this fish to Mr. Phelps before the smell gets any worse. Ugh. Fish smell. I hate it. Let's see what you got in there. How about a great that? sass comes you great responsibility. Here, let me take it from you. <laughs> Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Ew. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. Mm. There you go. Ten dozen tickets to the annual orphan's benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Bye. All right. All right, I need to go... Probably get gas. Whoops. Yeah, I definitely need to get gas. Nancy is about to start yelling at me. 
Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. All right, we've still got $2.50. We're actually doing pretty good. Mm, all right, I'm taking these back to the telegram office, right? There's the lilac in. Wait. <laughs> you like that not even U turn that I just made? Hi, you got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Great. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled moxie all over them, but I cleaned them up real good, so let's not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Joukowsky. Thanks for your help. Bye now. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to do the zippy. 25 cents was 25 cents. Yeah. Yeah, 1930, uh, money inflation hadn't really hit us that hard. Can I get this Hello, yet? Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right here. Good. Here's the blank I cut for you. Enjoy. I know. 25 cents plus no tax. Oh, I'm just down to 50 cents. Okay. Maybe I should uh, do a little bit more of the the driving around. We Hello, really are all slaves to capitalism. Audrey, I'll see that she gets it. Just yeah. My, desk. my hands are still really filthy. That's okay. Bye. All right. And I'll pass... Uh, the tele, the telegraph company, the telegram. What's the difference between a telegram and a telegraph? Is there any difference? These are the questions I have. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here. Yeah, right. Telegram. Let's go join a 1930s gang. Jetson at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. All right. Now that we have the t the cards, we can go and get the. The whatchamacallit, the trivet, which we're gonna need to solve a puzzle, because of course we do. It was Josiah's trivet. Hello, I have a telegram here for Margaret Judson. She'll be delighted, I'm sure. I'll take it to her. Thank you. Bye. Telegraph is a photo, telegram is mail. Okay, interesting. I never knew what the difference was. Telegraph is over the wire. Telegram is by hand. Okay. Do you have my bridge cards? Right here. Good. And here is Josiah. Good for you. Here's your money. He sounds so excited to give you money. Yeah, he is a pretty good guy. I do wish he would give us like five or ten different things so that we don't have to keep going back and wasting the gas. Feel like we're single-handedly breaking the ozone layer. Well. I like this dress. It's very flouncy. Yeah, Nancy, you tell them. Telegraph is the technology. Telegram is the actual message. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so now... Whoop. I almost hit a cow. Okay, hang on. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Counselor Ed out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. At least a book where she goes to Australia. I'm picturing, like, the Sydney Opera House on the cover of the book. All right, let's go back just because I'm... Wait, where did that... Counselor Ned at Camp Avondale. Different from our Ned? Ask me sports related question, I'll get it right. I mean, I'm that way, but with, you know, certain things, definitely not sports. We all, I guess we all have things that are just like, oh, if, if you ask me that, then I'll definitely know it. What's everybody's go-to uh, category in Trivial Pursuit? Mine is, um, Either the history category or the um, pop culture category. Oh, Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. 
I know the tax. The question about taxes is a is a valid question. One time you go there and he goes, "Good for you. I ran out of money." Yeah. Pop culture. Yeah. Trouble. It's Emily. She. Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Miss Willoughby is pretty uh, dramatic. Let me see here. Just in case. Jane told you, didn't she? Not really. That picture on the wall over there? I saw it move. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. Well, I mean, if sure there's physical proof sure. of this stuff happening, it can't be all in your mind, right? No, but I do have some good news. Well, sort of. Shh. Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh. Another, another close-up. Nothing. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't I? You know, it's... I'm a history nerd, just too. It's possible that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean he may have left us money after all? No, that's. I relate to that too, Miss Byron. And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel Dramatic bad close enough up. that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. I'd like to try to figure out what happened to that jewelry. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, just because no, I have not the history before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Oh, that guess. sounds fun, Ellery. This is Jane's grandmother. No, her grandmother was a very English Did English Josiah person. Ever remember? Did about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. Yeah. But whenever the subject of his I will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. Yeah, I, I mean, they need to make more Nancy Drew games, and I would lobby for her to go to Australia. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the bee's knees. Thanks. Uh, which painting moved? Oh, that one. Could have made this picture move. Weird. Yeah, it can't be in her mind because it did move, right? Like, is that what she's afraid of? Because she couldn't have imagined it if it happened. Last game was released to end of so, 2019, what did I think. Say? Did she tell you about the pictures and the voices? English. How long has this been going on? For about two weeks, I guess. You know what? I'll bet it's me. I'll bet it finally hit Emily that I'm just not Gloria and I never will be, and that running this place is always going to be all up to her. And it was just more than her poor mind could bear. I'd like to kind of look around. Is that okay with you? You betcha. And keep an eye out for those jewels. The sheriff's not going to investigate. He said of since course nobody he's not. got robbed at gunpoint or anything, coming out here again just didn't seem necessary. Let's sell my soul for Nancy Drew's self-care like simulator. Just Same. I just want to see Nancy see, get to do well, something that isn't have to solve to crime. Tell him about Emily's, you know, delicate state of mind. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. Hmm, okay, what can we do? Oh, we have this. So we have this. Um, there's something else that we need. 
We need to find that safe deposit box. We... Do, 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 do. Luckily, we don't have to unlock this every single time. Next game could be Nancy chasing Carmen Sandiego. I've never played any of the Carmen Sandiego games. Maybe I should at some point. It would be a good crossover. She needs to solve crime. That is her self-care. She's just a superhuman like that. Forget where you put what Marcel's band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I forgot to look at this. So I need to go figure out who Marcel is. So back outside. Everything just magically, magically closes up behind us. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Now what? Do you by any chance know who Marcel is? Marcel was what Josiah called his favorite hat. His hat? The man named his hat? I would probably enjoy those games. So to him, oh yeah, it Marcel is a sense. hat. I hear the cat purring. Do you still have Marcel? No, as a matter of fact, I gave that hat to Gloria Crandall. She said she was fond of the old fellow and wanted something to remember him by. Although I suspect the real reason she wanted that hat was to see if he'd stashed any money in it. It was nice Yikes. talking to you. I'm sure it was. Not everybody sucks like you do, Mr. Topham. Hi, kitty. The cat deserves a better owner than Mr. Topham. I've known the cat for a short while, and I will already die for him. All right, let's go back and ask Emily. Or maybe I could ask... What's cooking? No, well, she doesn't I'll talk know. To you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Oops. Hi, Nancy. Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer right below me. That's where all mom's mementos are. An episode of what for game show stream? I do need to do game show stream. That's going to be fun. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the bee's knees. Challenge him to a duel too. Maybe this is the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. Nice, 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 nice. You don't need to look at everything in there, do you? Sorry. All right, all right, all right. Let's go take the safe deposit box key to the bank. Oh, Carmen San Diego, yes. Did anybody watch? Uh, my brother was really into it, and he asked me to cover it. Um, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman on PBS. That was a big thing for, for Spencer. I know. And she's like, oh, wow, sorry. Pothole, pothole. Don't want to hit the potholes. If you hit the potholes, you might have to change a car tire, and it's very tedious, and I hate it. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. Yes, yeah, she does not. She's like, you can look for the hat, but not the other stuff. It's like, what do you got in there? 25 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. Uh, oh, we have to deliver something to Camp Avondale, right? Let me do that while I'm over here. Hi, Alice. Is Counselor Ed around? He has a telegram. I think he's down at the swim dock. I'll take it to him. Thank oh, you. Counselor Bye. Ed. I thought it said Ned. Maybe I was just thinking about my my um, 
my hot takes on Ned, and that's why I read it wrong. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one's for Mrs. Perkins at Sunnybrook Farms. Keep up the good work. It's like of most people in this game. Probably the only one who likes the Zippy's guy. Yeah, the Zippy's guy is fine. Wait, I already didn't. I wasn't listening. Sunnybrook Farms. Um. Wait, I don't want to actually go there right now, though. We've got a dollar. We're fine. We're fine. Hello again. I think I found the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. Really? I have it right here. It is from this bank. May I see if it opens the box? It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this case... You're gonna make I'm me do a chore, aren't you? ...to open it for you. Oh, but I... However... Were you to do me a small favor? Sure. I hired a seamstress to make a dress for my wife. He seems to like his job for sure. Unfortunately, the Makes seamstress me happy and too. I had a falling out, and now I need to find someone to finish the dress. Maybe I could find somebody. How much are you willing to pay them? Oh, the fact of the matter is, the dressmaker quit because I couldn't pay Oh, her. so when you said I you had a falling out, her. you meant this is not you tried to not pay this her and then she quit. Ruin. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Archer. Oh, poor Mr. Archer. I wanted to get my wife something nice because, well, it might be the last nice thing she gets for a long, long time. Now, wow, the depression was depressing. Used to be a dressmaker. Say no more. Just give me the dress and I'll take care of it. I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and basted together. All that's needed is a sewing machine. When it's finished, bring it back and I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. Bye. All right, so now we're doing a sewing mission. No, he's not going to kill his wife. He's just going broke because he's a banker in the Depression. And no one trusts banks, so... Well, at least I hope he's not going to kill his wife. What's cooking? Since you used to be a dressmaker, do you think you could help me sew something? Me? Sew? <laughs> no, I can't. Sewing takes practice, and I haven't sewed a stitch in years. Whatever Lazy it is, bones. Me, I'd wreck it. Then how about giving me some pointers? Yeah, uh, no <laughs> the G depresso. Sorry. All right, no one wants to help Nancy do a chore for somebody else, so now I'm going to have to do the sewing. Yeah, banks were kind of not super reliable during the uh, Depression. Would it be all right if I used your sewing machine? Go right ahead, but remember, you're on your own. There's no needle. It's probably in the box with the rest of Mom's sewing stuff. Ask Jane if she knows where it is. Oh god, okay. So we need to get the needle to do the sewing so that we can open the safe deposit box. There's like chores for the chores for the chores. What's cooking? Would you happen to know where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? I moved all of Gloria's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the delivery man. They gotta be put in the shipping container just so oh, we've got a a kitten. sort this pies. Is wants a more meta guys. chores. Now, why don't you go out on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Sounds good. Oh, is Burger King called something other than Burger King in in uh, Australia? Huge on Burger King. My personal favorite is Wendy's, and I will die on the hill that Wendy's is good. I love Wendy's. Okay. Let's see. I like that there's stains on it. It's a nice touch. Variety of pie. Small pie always goes to the left of the large pie. Meta, meta chores. Yeah, chores for the chores for the chores. We've got to sort the pies to get the needle, to do the sewing, to get the safe deposit box key open. All right. The 
Sandgate wants two large cherry and then one blue and one chocolate. So, two large cherry, uh, one blue, one chocolate. Leave them uh, with the bigger size ones for now, but I guess I can swap them if I need it. Hungry Jacks. Interesting. I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. Riverville. I thought that said Riverdale, and I was like, oh god, this is about to become a crossover out of our nightmares. One small and large blue, one small and large chocolate, and two large pies. So that means two large cherry pies. Chocolate pies look really good, though. Not gonna lie. I've never had the onion rings at Wendy's. This is the best takeout. Yeah, I love I love Frosties like a lot, a lot. <laughs> and you can get little ones for your dog. Whoops. One small and large cherry. I like their uh, baconator and their bacon cheese fries. Those are my that's my uh, go to thing. Small and large cherry, small and large chocolate, and two pies of the same size. So okay. Small and large cherry, and then small and large chocolate. And let's just say for fun that the two, well, the two pies of the same size are blueberries, are small blueberries, because that's, there's not another big uh, blueberry. Oh, Wendy's doesn't do onion rings. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Skydale, two large blue, two large chocolate, and two different size pies. Pies. Okay, so just tell me it's a, it's two, a, a large and small cherry. Well, I guess there was a, there was an extra uh, large blueberry pie. Okay, Knox View, two same size cherry, one large blue, and two same size chocolate. Well, this is an issue. Hmm. Okay, so let's swap this with that. Because they specified that they want a large blue and these people did not. Well, um... Wait, two same size chocolate, two same size cherry, and one large blue. Okay. Do two small chocolate because there's only one big chocolate. And then same with this. So like that. Uh and then one small and large cherry, no blue, two large chocolate. Okay. So let me swap this. Alright, that should be good. There, that should do it. Hell yeah. High sorting masters. I'm gonna call dad. Just drop a nickel into the slot, please. Very good. Now, how may I be of service? Hi, Mr. Kowski. Could you please connect me with my dad? His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew. Hi, Dad. Did you pick those papers up yet? Yep. Great. You can give them to me tonight when you get home from Emily's. So, what else have you been doing? Oh, see you. See you, Miss Firing. Thanks for hanging Emily out. Emily invited me to Lilac Inn because she wanted me to have you lock her mother's jewelry up in your safe. Make sure well, your assignment gets done. So I could take it with Stay me. hydrated. Good gosh. Looks like a loaded pepperoni. It did look very, uh, very red. That was right after the stove in the kitchen exploded. The stove exploded? Sounds to me like you'd be well advised to Break cut legs, not yours. I'll shirt. do my best. No, I want to find out what's going on. I have to find out what's going on. You have to? Well, yeah, you know, 
Emily just lost her mom, and she's worried about losing the inn, and her guardian's all wet when it comes to helping out, and... And the truth is, you are so curious that you feel like you'll absolutely burst if you don't find out why all these weird things have been happening, right? Yes. Don't worry, I know the feeling. You're a chip off the old block, I'm afraid. Well, as long as you're like me in one other way, you should be fine. What way is that? Smart? Careful. I'm very careful, but we'll try, Dad. I'm earning money by delivering telegrams for Tubby's telegrams. Good for you. That's a great way to meet people and to accumulate a little cash, which might come in handy. You're little being the operative word. Your car, you know. Yes, Dad. What else have you been up to? I'm pretty sure I saw the car belonging to Emily's banker parked at the side of the road by the Lilac Inn this morning, just before the explosion. Are you suggesting Emily's banker was somehow responsible for the explosion? When I asked him about it, he did seem kind of evasive. It's okay to have your suspicions, Nancy. But in a town as small as Titusville, it's very easy to alienate people. Until you know the facts, you'd be well advised to keep your suspicions to yourself. Life lessons with Emily Carson Jordan Drew. Jane. Don't what start rumors do about anyway? people. A guardian is pretty much a surrogate parent. Jane is legally responsible for Emily's physical and financial well-being. Jane doesn't strike me as being the parental type. In fact, I get the impression she's in way over her head. Fortunately for her, it's not forever. Most guardianships end when the ward turns 18. Then both Jane and Emily will be free to do whatever they please. You'd think Emily's mom would have chosen somebody a little more competent mm. to take care of her only child. Things aren't always... Yeah, we're like, like her conscience, almost. As bad as you think. Or maybe she's worse. Don't tell me you think Emily's guardian stole the jewelry. Good grief, where did you get such a suspicious mind? I think We've lived a lot in our 19-year life, the Dad. To solve a problem is to look at all the possibilities. Dad. I did say that, didn't I? I'm a little worried about Emily. Why? She admitted to me that lately she's been hearing voices and seeing things move all by themselves. Jane thinks she's losing her marbles. Running a restaurant is a big responsibility. Maybe it's getting to her. Well, that's what Jane keeps saying. And they weren't Maybe super Jane up to date on mental health now. awareness in the 30s. Bye, Dad. See you tonight. All right. Oh, Jane's gone. What's this uh, fucked up phone. I'll bet those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. Interesting. Of course there is. There's something written on the back. Door in parlor window seat. Let's go look. You're, you learn a lot when you're an immortal time traveler. Dead. Yeah, it. we're kind of like, um, you know, Nancy very well might be um, um, like a Doctor Who type immortal time traveler. It kind of all fits. Oh, we found a secret passageway, guys. Later on in the game than we usually do, but we found it. From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. This is side passageway off the passageway. Jeepers, I'm behind one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. Yep, there it is. She's not crazy. I don't like the dark. I know, it's creepy. I don't like it. Always a secret tunnel. Secret passage, take a shot. Well, technically you'd have to take two because I count this as a passage off the passage. An oh. old piggy bank. Swell, a dollar. This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time. Hell yeah, a whole dollar. This. Oh, it's a puzzle. Right, 
let's try to get this. Start with the... I assume we should start with the lettering. Creepy's Corner. I don't know if it actually goes up top, but I'm gonna start working on this moon. Uh-oh. Hang on, chat. I have lost my feed to the chat, so I cannot see what anybody's saying, so... Give me one second. Let me get it booted back up. My phone kind of hates me. To be fair, I should be using the phone as a second monitor, but... Here, alas, here we are. Sometimes it feels like there's gotta be some kind of haunting causing every uh, piece of technology I own to break down. You know? That's just me. Uh, let's see. Oh, I just scrolled past our, uh, in, in getting back uh, logged in, I scrolled past the live. I was like, oh, that's us. Uh... Yeah, there's always a secret passageway. I'm back, I can see the chat. Creepy's corner, that's not disconcerting or anything. Or it's just because technology sucks, yeah. Probably that, but it's more fun to think it's something more ominous. Let's see, we got the moon assembled, so we've got that. This dude is... Looks like it, his hand. Where's the... yeah. Yep, that's that. Looks like he's in a cemetery. Like a mausoleum. Over there. Okay, and then there's like, okay. How that goes. That matches up. I think that matches up. Something is wrong. These are out of whack. There we go. I did it! Creepy's Corner. Creepy's Corner is a great band name. Yeah, I agree. So Creepy's Corner, by the way, is an old-timey radio show in the world of Nancy Drew. And we just found a record with it on there and of course it's going to be a puzzle i'll show you that puzzle in a second I'll do it in a second okay, where does the secret passageway go how much longer is it yes i better not leave the lights on Jeepers, that sounds like richard oh that scared me open right into his living room told you i'm jumpy secret passages you should remove Review the movie Clue. I love Clue. I should do a video about Clue. I think I used to think that, like, oh, everybody's talked about Clue, so what's the point? But, like, I'm gonna have to talk about Clue at some point now just because I love I'm it. Things. Yeah, I'm getting creeped out. I want to leave, Nancy. All right, so this passageway goes directly from the inn to Richard Topham's yes, house next door. All right. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I you, see it. You can't. You didn't see that. You couldn't see that huge ass Remember, darner needle. When it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and so many questionable clue things. adaptations, but the well, old I'm movie was good. Yes, I agreed. A secret passageway that goes from the end. I actually don't think I've seen anything but the original Clue. And, off of it, I found a and the uh, Psych hundredth episode parody, Emily's which was fun. That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing? It's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room. 
It may even be that someone is trying to scare hey! you on purpose. Ariana Hook purpose? is in the chat, everybody. Do something like that? I miss you, girl. I to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed Harry, you. I just found, I found a, um, I'm going to tell you once it stops making noise. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone. You think I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Currently editing, so I can't stay for long. Want to stop by? Hi, I miss you. We should, yeah. I found this, um, <laughs> this, um, this my scene movie. It's like my scenes go to Hollywood, and I thought of you, and I was like, oh my god, if I cover this, I need Harry to help me. I my scene movies are the best. Well, I did find the picture right there. It's you. Good but luck I've with your editing. Seen it before in my life. Besides, why is Nancy like why is she? This desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. Yes. If you ever want to help me talk about it on the channel, I'm totally down. You're right. I'm sorry. I have I not seen it in forever. You. Well, you're just trying to help Emily, so I guess I shouldn't get mad. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to do. Heaven knows she could nice. use some fresh air. Nice. Oh, talk to you later. So excited. Bye now. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I hope your editing goes good. All right, where, what am I doing? I'm talking about my scenes and now I'm getting off topic. <laughs> Snooping through stuff, okay. Oh, yeah, we're playing uh, Nancy Drew puzzle games and they're very silly and uh, sometimes difficult to, more difficult to beat than one would think. Um. Making a note in my handy dandy notebook. In this from the bottom of my heart, you are a kind lady who sparkles like good water and makes me think that the sky's the limit. Aww. Uh, we're getting close to endgame. I'd say we're about three quarters of the way at this point. It's, that's why we moved up the stream, because it's they're getting longer. All right, so this is a letter to Gloria from uh, Josiah. Here's a letter from to Gloria from Jane. Let's see, it's taken so long to answer your letter. Still a secretary. The bottling plant business is booming, busier than ever. There's stains on this. Typing this during my lunch break. <laughs> Please excuse the mustard stains. Um, on a bologna sandwich, of course. I'll take care of Emily if something happens. All she has to do is write, and I'll come running. Uh, quit worrying about such things. You've got a nice place to live and a sweet little girl. Still at the boarding house. It's not the Ritz. Um... Two bad apples, this one girl named Marion Abern. She dropped in the other day to borrow some bobby pins, so I went to the drawer to get them. Uh, when I turned back around, she was going through my purse. Said it had fallen over and she was just put picking it back up, but I know what I saw anyway, I'm sure. I sure miss you. I'm investing as much money as I can in the stock market because my boss says it's a surefire way to get rich. Oof. When was this dated? March 19th, 1929. Rough. Very rough. All right. So that's a letter she kept from Jane. Oh, God. Now I have to do sewing. The sewing minigame is not that hard. No golfing, so that's good. Is the dress Jim Archer gave me, and I can start sewing. This is just a uh, click and drag and try to follow the, the lines as best as possible. God. This would never fly for anybody who does any actual sewing, but you know. Until Nancy stops me, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn it down if the game's gonna let this one slide for me. I'm 
Old timey sewing machines are fascinating and terrifying. Better start over. What? Right, right at the end? I have theories. Share your theories. I'd love to hear theories. Right at the end, I messed up too many times. That's so sad. I made too many mistakes. I'd better do it over. I can do better than this. All right, mistakes. all right. I'd better do it over. I need to get back into sewing. I used to do it all the time, and I was actually pretty good at it. I just... You would think that I would get more into it when uh, quarantine happened, but I was just like, nah. Fell, fell out of doing it around that time. There we go. Not bad, Miss Drew. Not bad at all. Right at the end. It's so, it's so, uh... Ginger Jane's not the real Jane. She's fake and Emily simply doesn't know better because she was very young last she saw her. This is actually the girl Jane complained about in her letter. Ooh. That's so good. <laughs> that's creepy, isn't it? It would explain why she didn't want to sew, even though uh, Jane used to be a seamstress. Maybe she's, if she's a fake Jane, then she doesn't know how to sew. Even the Mario. What's game. cooking? Well, I'll talk to you later. All righty, dighty. Yeah, because how would Emily know? Like, she doesn't know this person. Where am I going now? Oh, I'm going to the bank. Yes, an imposter is among us. <laughs> Cue up the uh, Among Us uh, banner. I love Among Us because it's basically just, uh, if anybody played Mafia as a kid, it's just Digital Mafia. Yeah, Mafia. We used to play Mafia in youth group, but because it was youth group, How's uh, the dress coming? <laughs> it was so funny because it's mafia, right? So we're literally playing a game where we're killing each other off. And that didn't bother the youth pastor. What bothered uh, our youth group was... Um, we, we had to change it so that instead of a doctor, we had an angel. And I was like, that's where the line is for Christian mafia? That is not Josiah's will. It looks like some kind of journal. Very funny. Would Good times. I kept this? If it was money or jewelry or something like that, I'd turn it over to Topham. But a journal? Finders keepers, as far as I'm concerned. I'll cool. be at my desk if you need me. All right. So. It's locked. Naturally. Naturally. Nancy's figuring it out. Anything All right. I, can do for you? I guess I'll be going. Give my best to Emily. Right, so this is how we have to open up this thing. We've got to, you know, we've, we've got to find the combination. We find the combination by lining up with this. Uh, and you'll notice these are all references to different things that make sound. We're basically going to, whoops, I didn't mean to talk to him again. Hello again. We're going to have to listen to that old record. And then every time they use a sound effect, we're going to have to make note of it and then translate it. Fun times. We will allow murder and torture, but we draw the line at doctor. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I, I really don't. <laughs> Just thinking back, it's one of those youth group things where I'm like, that is so silly. <laughs> you think the general concept of like, 
organized crime would be the the um, the deciding factor. All right, so let's listen to this. This is a very very silly uh, radio show, if I'm remembering, and I'm gonna have to take note of all of the different sound effects. I'll never forget the night it all began, that dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that, and to get money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had my arch enemy, Nick, form himself Jesus. fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. Right, so I hear horses, clap of thunder twice, and then rain? Rain. My fear that he would hear me proved groundless, for a terrible storm <laughs> began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked, I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the 20 gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save, perhaps, a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword. In an instant, I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known. The storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, if anybody's ever watched any, listened to any of those old radio shows, this is pretty accurate. As a swordsman, I fainted, I parried, and yet victory eluded me. And soon I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why, you wounded me. I had managed to wound him on his right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you! Yeah, I actually really love old time... Uh, radio shows. I put them on sometimes to go to sleep if I need, like, noise. They're calming. Gosh. I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad Horrible. Trunk or treat. My church growing up had a trunk or treat. They allowed costumes that were biblical, good or evil, but not a uh, princess. That's that sounds um, like similar to the church that I grew up in. Um, yeah. And it's funny because I grew up to love Halloween. Um, okay, so now we have to take the sounds that we heard in the order we heard them and decode. So let's see, I've got hoof beats, it's G over here, of course. Uh, clap of thunder twice. Thunder. I guess this would be thunder. So, oh, oh. Rain is D, so good something. Door opens. 
F. F's in chat, I guess, but in, like in a good way. <laughs> Footsteps. E. I have clashing swords twice. L, L. L's in chat and F's in chat. Damn. Thunder again. That's O. And then sound of coins. 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 W. Good fellow. Paul. Oh. All right. So good fellow is the the combination. As long as I did it right, it is. Nice. Seven point oh two five megahertz. Puck. That's who Josiah played in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Interesting. Okay, flute. Let me write these down. We're going to have to call them on a, a radio because this is old timey. Pyramus, 7.057 megahertz. They're all characters from Midsummer Night's Dream. Seven point five seven. Bisbee, seven point oh five oh megahertz. It looks like some kind of record of the people Josiah talked to on his ham radio. All right. Cool. So now we have to go do a ham radio puzzle. But I like it better than the last time we they made us do one of these. Because, of course, Nancy Drew, uh, in the series, gave us two different times where we needed to use a ham radio. So we're going to have to give all of these people their lines. So I think we need to do something, look something up in Midsummer Night's Dream before we do that. Because I don't know about you, I don't have a uh, Midsummer Night's Dream memorized by heart, even though I do love it. Now what? Could I see that copy of a Midsummer yeah, Night's Dream? He's got a copy over there? there. Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but request denied. It was nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Oh. At least this time we're in the 30s, so the radio calls are valid true. Yeah, I don't really... I don't really consider myself religious anymore, but I was raised very religious. Uh... And, you know, obviously, if people are religious and that's uh, helpful for them, uh, I fully support that. Uh, you know, just not. Uh, where am I going? I need to be going the other way to the to the secret passageway. Yeah, I, I, I'm not uh, religious anymore, but um, obviously nothing wrong with being religious as long as you're not like terrible to other people, you know? <laughs> Homophobic, that kind of thing. Do, 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 do. Ex-Catholic, more like vaguely pagan. Nice. Guess I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak inside and have a quick look at that Shakespeare book. Yeah, we're just gonna break into his house, but just like a little bit. Oh, Yuri, don't sell me out. I love you. Good of the game to give us a heads up on how to shut the cat up. If you don't shut him up, then he'll come out and investigate, and then you'll get in trouble. There you go, Yuri. 
think about him. Oh, here's Josiah, and he's wearing Marcel. That's a book from another game. Him uh, teaching somebody how to Just use their brain powers are very funny. Alright, so I've got to circle these quotes. There's one for each person. Oops. I don't know how to uh, spell thou, I guess. Yes, you're a very nice cat. Give me a second. Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. Going there. Okay. Oh, I guess Nancy's writing it down too, but you know. Better safe than sorry. This is actually one of my favorite quotes from Midsummer Night's Dream. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. Rolls right off the tongue. Great play. Don't know why the play is that thick, because obviously Midsummer Night's Dream is not that long. Uh, but... Clear your mind of all thoughts. Well, that's easy for you, Mr. Topham, but some of us have more than two brain cells. Right? And we can't go out the front door because he will also hear us. We've got to sneak out through the uh, floor from whence we came. All right. What was that? Nancy, it's going to be fine. It's fine. Whoops, I didn't want to look in here again. I wonder where the Easter eggs are in this particular game. Where, where um, Jane thinks that we're just kind of coming and going from. Oh, I didn't think about it. What's cooking? Well, I'll talk to you. This later. character is Jane, oh, and the last lady. character was Jane too, right? I, we have two Janes. Am I just now putting that together? How did I just now put that together? Maybe it's the name. Maybe the name is bad luck. Sorry if your name is Jane. <laughs> it's great. Jane's great avo, maybe. Or maybe Janes are just the Karens of the Druniverse. Ginger Jane, thank you. I'm sorry, I was not catching on. I don't know why I wasn't catching on. My brain was just uh, drawing a blank, I guess. Speaking of blanks, we have our blank here. A smooth quartz. This one's Looks broken. I like was a ham radio operator. Was indeed. This one's broken, but thankfully it's at seven, which is where we need it to be. So let's call Flute first. Flute is 70.025. So that one's easier to turn than this one. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? This is Flute, but you sure don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. Nice to meet you. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley. And I hate to say it, but he passed away earlier this year. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. What sentence is that? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me and told me that if and when he recited a certain passage from Shakespeare, I was to respond with that sentence. Weird fellow, that Puck. If I tell you the passage, will you tell me the sentence? Well, yeah, sure, I guess. Especially seeing as Puck's no longer with us. Oh. 
All right, so I've got to give him the right sentence. So his sentence is, Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Shall we another there great, fond pageant Another great line. Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Right. Oh, gosh. It failed. Render job failed. Oops. Hang on, guys. I have some bad news. It definitely seems like this... Dang, video is not is Flute your real name? going. No, whoops. Just what Puck insisted on calling me. Sorry. What did you say his real name was? Josiah. No, stop playing the game until I can get back to what I'm doing. Hang on. Sorry, guys. This is why I usually don't uh, try to render while I'm streaming. I thought it would be able to handle it, and alas, it could not. Ooh. How's everybody doing, though? Are we doing good? Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. I blame Jane. I always blame Jane. Everybody's doing good? Cool. Uh, sorry guys, technical difficulties. All right, back Crowley. to the game. Strange. I never heard of him. Why is that strange? Well, he led me to believe he was this big cheese out in Hollywood. Ooh, waiting on takeout. What'd you get? <laughs> Said he owned his I'm doing home. good. He didn't own a studio, and he certainly didn't live in Hollywood. I'll be darned. So he was just lying to me. Well, that's all right. I may have told him a fib or three over the years myself. Like the time I told him I was a scratch golfer. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means either, but we know that I suck at golf. Help. Over and out. All right. So now that we have his line, let's call Pyramus. Pyramus, it can be found at 7.057. And of course, we have to go all the way around. Pyramus, can you hear me? Hello? Uh, this is nice. Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy uh, Drew. A bridge. Does somebody named Puck usually mm. call you on this frequency? Named it depends Puck on the game. Like the earlier ones were obviously like way shorter, two and a half, three hours. We're now getting up into the four to five hour range. Well, that's a good excuse, I guess. Uh, and then they're gonna get even longer as we go further on in the series. So I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. Why we've moved up the stream by us some time. We're almost done with this one though. Whenever he read a certain passage from Shakespeare. Whenever he rattled off this Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid saying he gave me. How did you know about that? Long story. But if I were to rattle off the quote, there's no reason why you can't tell me the stupid saying, right? Well, come to think of it, he never said the quote had to come from him. So, yeah, I guess I could tell you. No, these were about... Ten dollars, nine or ten dollars when I was, um, when I was playing them. Like, when they were coming out. I'm enjoying them, the games, and the social aspect. I'm glad that everybody's enjoying them. Uh, thou speakest, thou speakest all right. I am, I am that the very wanderer of, of the night. night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here. You're gonna love this. A bar We're almost dog. done, Cameron. <laughs> well, to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. Oops. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Just out of curiosity, 
What kind of car did Puck drive, do you know? I don't think he had a car. And he tried to tell me he was rich. Well, he was, he just enough. didn't have a car. Not everybody has to have a car. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good value. They were a tiny little startup company back in the day. Last person. Fizzby is at 5-0. Oh. Ie 5 oh. no. Oh, whoops. I went, I passed it by accident. Hang on. There we go. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me. Hello? I'm Fisby, but only Puck calls me that. Who's this? My name's Nancy. I shouldn't have a car. Same. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Yeah, about. see, Chris doesn't have a car. Not everybody has a car. <gasps> oh, dear. They closed the play he was starring in, didn't they? That's why Honestly, I if I could just take public transportation like every single day, I would. <laughs> I was afraid it was something like that. Actually, you haven't heard from him because he There's passed a calming away voice. several months ago. Oh, my. That's worse, isn't it? And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line yeah. and understood my cue. Your yeah. cue? Yes, you see, Puck. Not everybody Puck has to drive. I feel like driving is overrated sometimes. Puck wanted to share his love of acting with me, so he gave me a line to say. A very curious line, I might add, and told me to repeat it only after I heard my cue. A passage written by Mr. William Shakespeare. Yep, and most people's so inability to drive. So passage, you'll respond with the line he gave you to say? Immediately. I know it by heart, you see. Here it goes. All right. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. <clears throat> the authorities are alert for bad water. So do not go this way. The authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. That's what I was to say. Although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. And now, as Puck was fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out. Hi. Okay. So these three lines, I'm going to need to get another. I'm going to need to start another um, note piece of note paper. Going for the second piece of note paper today. Portland has a great pu public transportation system. That's great. A double life with strangers. I know, right? I think Josiah was pretty cool. So he did that so that those sentences uh, could be translated and help us solve the um, mystery of where his will was hidden. I've never been to Portland. I hear it's beautiful there. I think of Portland, I always think of, um... Or no, I was about to say, I, I always think of, um, Twilight, but that was Seattle. What, what was, what took place in Portland? Oh, Grimm took place in Portland. Anybody watched Grimm? Alright, where am I going? This, the, um... The these signs, we need to use these to translate. So, uh, flute. So leave by road while the owner is in. So it would be like this with the two arrows and the circle. Uh, the owner is in. Looks kind of like a horseshoe or like the Libra sign sideways. I think that's the Libra sign or is that the Leo sign? I can't remember. Uh, and then thieves about. Thieves. Right, two over ten. Oh, your mom was an extra grim. That's so cool. Super cool. Yeah, Grimm was a big thing for me for a while. Portlandia. I never watched Portlandia. I haven't seen it in ages. I'd probably be like, wow, this is incredibly silly now, but I remember loving it. 
just doing, I'm just taking some notes. Um, parking dog. Quiet. This neighborhood. Look at this. It's really rough renditions of what these symbols look like. Um, the authorities would be this. Yeah, my whole family used to be obsessed with Grimm. That's cool that your mom was on it. Uh, one of my friends told me that while he was living in New York, he was an extra on Gotham, and I like freaked out a little bit. I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah, I was one of the BG uh, cops on Gotham. I was like, wait, what? Um, what am I looking for? Bad water. Don't go this way. Ish. Authorities don't tend to actually do much in the way of help, typically. Now that I've gotten all those down... Do, 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 do. Yeah, apologies if I have to stop and take notes as part of uh, doing these live. And so far I haven't massively messed anything up, so that's good. nobody questions that Nancy's just chilling. All right. In this in this carriage house, nobody um All right. So I think flute flute's little thingy translates to this, this and this. All right. This B translates to this, this and this. Oh wait, was that wrong? Authorities. Huh. It's not supposed to be wrong. Let me do the other one. Aramis. This. This. Where's the two little diamonds here? And this. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Okay, it's this. Uh, this and this. There we go. Oh, bottom. Okay, hang on. So bottom was what Puck played. He was the he's the guy that turns into a donkey. Is in camera angles will all of this happen? Yes, very interesting camera angles. Um. Uh, what did he say? He wrote in his letter to Gloria. He said, "I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You're a kind woman who sparkles like good water and makes me think the sky's the limit." All right. So I gotta go all the way back and translate one more because, of course, I do. The game thought it'd be fun to just throw a little curveball. Probably should have remembered that I needed it, but I did not. So here we are. All the way back. Chris, how's it going? Oh, you're right. He did play Puck. That's true. He, he didn't play bottom, he played puck, but he, he wrote to her, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, which was, I guess, the clue. Um, her sexism works in Nancy's favor as people are more likely to overlook when she does questionable things. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. All right, so kind lady is the cat. I could have just written cat, but I drew a little doodle of a cat anyway. Oh well. Uh, good water. Fresh water. Uh, 
Sky's the limit. Perfect. Doing okay. That's good. Sorry you're not doing uh, better than just okay. But yeah, it's sort of like how women were the uh, main spies, you know, very effective spies in World War II because no one has suspected us of anything. I think Nancy's employing that same strategy. And my life will feel that. <laughs> Sorry, man. The not, I'd like to be done coming into this carriage house, by the way. Sky's the limit. Yay! Puzzle! Alright, your goal is to reach the end of the path and to land exactly on the last spot of the board. No going over. Each card can only be used once. You do not need to use all of the cards. Take a shortcut. You must be on a spot with a picture on it and use the same picture to take that pathway. Good luck. Alright. Setup seems a bit dangerous, just flinging electricity about like that. Yeah, in this wooden carriage house. I've got questions. Okay, so if we move four spaces, we get there. And if we get there, where is the... Is it worth using eight spaces to go? Oh, yeah, we definitely could uh, get a few extra spaces if we do that. So let's go four spaces and then use the eight to cut across. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten spaces, but then uh, nine spaces, I guess, wouldn't really be um worth it but let's just do the 10 anyway and then we'll do six to get to can i use the diamond yeah diamond is only one so we can go all this way for just one spot and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten again huh hmm. let's see at this point i've saved myself a few spots so three I do this one two three four five that should be good right oh that wasn't hard oh my god fire there's fire Whoa. yep almost done vincent thank you cameron i will save we're gonna save right this second since you said that a golf ball no doubt meant to be used on that golf course of josiah's And I click on because there's definitely something else I need to click on here. This. Take this to Tiny Town and for oodles of fun, use it to hit a hole in one. All right. Cool, cool, cool. We're about to go solve the game, everybody. Who wants to take some bets as to who did it? Yeah, Josiah, I think, hated the carriage house. It's a gold golf ball. I don't think it's made of gold. I think it's just golden painted, but still pretty cool. I use this golf ball to hit a hole in one. It's trying to beat this godforsaken thing. And that looks like the bank. Another take deposit box, take key. deposit box key. Ginger Jane, it's the cat. So we're about to beat the game. So let's do a couple of end gamey things. Um. Oh, and I found this. What? You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please go talk to her. She won't listen to me. I'm no help at Vince all. Ginger Jane is not Jane. Yeah. All right. Let's go talk to... Not Jane. Emily. Emily Crandall. I'm pretty sure Emily Crandall is a version of the character that was Just actually in the Lilac Inn book. Heights, Nancy. Why? What's the matter? I took a nap after I got back from running errands, and when I woke up, 
This was in my hand. It's one of the necklaces that I thought had been stolen. I have no idea how it got there. I it think she's pulling like a uh, legit gaslight situation, like the movie Gaslight. I can't cope with it. I'm having a what Jane call it? A nervous breakdown. No, you're not. Mm. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> go home. You're just making things worse. Wait, let me go find your treasure first and then I'll go home. Did you talk to her? Has it? Who among us hasn't had a casual breakdown, though? Like, it's not that big. It's not. It's gonna be okay, Emily. I'm not so sure, Miss Willoughby. What's more, I think I've found something that'll solve all. Not that it's not a big deal, but uh, you know. Red hair girl, see most actors in the show. I need to cover more H two O. I have not forgotten. I did not. I knew that everybody would love that. Would uh, like me covering it. I did not expect it to be as popular as it did. That video. It shot up to being like the sixth most popular video of all time on my channel. You're doing this detective thing for free, you know? Castle like gatekeep girl boss. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, this is cute. Uh, that little symbol we just learned means kind woman lives here, and it was it's here. So I don't know if that's for Gloria or for Emily, but somebody put that there, and I think that's cute. Let's call. Oh yeah, we're about to beat the game, and we have tons of money. So let's call our friends. Hi, could you please connect me with Bess Marvin at KL54468? Just a second. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's Nancy again. Stay off my feet this time. Okay? I didn't even realize we had two Janes in the series until Hi, right now. Emily's banker, Jim Archer, he asked me to sew a dress together for him because he can't... Oh, what's the number one finish? most watched uh, video on my channel? It, I believe it's still wife. Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire. It's got... Like 5.6 thousand subscribers or bit um views. No. Anyway, maybe this Jim Archer guy just wants you to feel sorry for him. Oh, Bess, no banker in his right mind would make something like that. Crime detective Cool. I'll check it out. The big market for H two O. Yeah, I'll definitely have to um, do more of that. All I know is if Mr. Archer really is hard up for money, he may be willing to stoop pretty low to get it. My thoughts exactly. That's it for now. Bye. Oh, and if you call back and we're not here, it means we went to see this movie called The Big Trail. Yeah, this guy named John Wayne is in it. <laughs> John Helen Wayne. A real dreamboat. We'll let you know if she's right. Is John Wayne really a dreamboat? Like I don't know anything about John Wayne. Was he like a was he like a heartthrob back in the day? He probably was. Hi, Mr. Kowski. Could you please connect me with my dad? His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the thumbnail. I was pretty proud of how that thumbnail came out. Hi, Dad. Yeah, I should start covering Psych. I need to do more Monk, too. Oh, I can't Goodbye, say anything. Dad. See you tonight. Right? I mean, 1930? Yeah, I mean, it could be about that time. My grandmother was scarred for life as a kid when she went to go see Creature of the Black Lagoon in theaters. She said she didn't sleep that night. I guess he was back then, IDK, yeah. Alright, let's do some mystery solving. I always thought when I think about like uh, heartthrobs of old Hollywood, I think about like uh, Jimmy Stewart and um, what am I trying to say? Um, James Dean. I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had Pinky one Bill was box. made in the thirties. That's cool. Opened it. So Can whose you key tell is me this? Key this is. It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara Clarence always called Superman. me. Her ace in the hole. That's who this key belongs to, Clara Pickford. Yeah, the car just crashes in the front of the building. Ah, so this is Clara Pickford's safe deposit box. Do you hear that? This is Clara's, this is the old lady's safe deposit box. Yeah. 
So, Clara Pickford was really Josiah Crowley in disguise. Apparently, he loved playing tricks like that on people and hiding things right under their noses. So, Clara Pickford was Josiah Crowley in drag. Right on, Josiah Crowley. Here's his will. I wonder what this is. Gloria Dowd, now Crandall, and Jane Willard. Man of many faces, yes. See, Josiah Jane seemed Willoughby. really cool. I wish we could have met him. him. Jane Willoughby. Ooh. Oh, it certainly doesn't. Check it out, Ellery. Doesn't look Willoughby. like Jane. It's a fake Jane. It's an imposter Jane. Move out of the way, would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby, the real You did Jane call Willoughby. it. It's been swell knowing you, sister. I really wanted to tell you you were right, but I didn't want to ruin it if you had second thoughts and spoil it for everybody. All right, well, thankfully, the game has been training us to be a good driver this whole time. So now we've got to follow Jane. Oh, God, as she tries to... Oh, God. If we let her out of sight, she will uh, get away forever and we'll have to use a second chance. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, where'd she go? There she is. I was very close. Realism prepared me for this. Ah! Uh... I'll bet she's heading for the state line. Okay. I know. I'll take a shortcut and hit her off. All right. How did she think she was going to get to the state line that way? Ooh. Yeah, the close up is is uh we got to do a car chase. Yeah, the car chase. Ooh, she crashed into the pies. That's a perfectly good waste of pie. Business. Dear Ned, I know you'll be home from school in a couple of days. Old stationery. I can't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. I figured out that Emily Crandall's nice. guardian was really an imposter named Marion, who intercepted the letter Emily wrote to Jane Willoughby after her mom died. Can you imagine she getting this letter from your girlfriend? Jane, not only so she could steal Emily's valuables, but so she could convince Emily that she was incapable of running Lilac Inn, and that she should sell it and split the money with her. On top of all that, I found Josiah Crowley's real will. In it, he left Emily so much money that she'll be able to hire all the people she Yay. needs to keep the inn going. He left Jim Archer a ton of money, too, which means he won't have to close his bank. And from now on, he'll be able to buy his wife a new dress anytime he wants. I see the day, Richard yes. Topham, Josiah left him nothing. That picture. Topham still refuses to admit that you think Nancy shoved a camera right in his face? That he's going to contest the will I found. Dad says it's highly doubtful. No, it's succeed, Ned, but don't let your anger be consume you. <laughs> no, I actually anyway, feel for Ned this time. Nancy's like, hey, yeah, so I just solved nice this random mystery where this lady was trying to gaslight my friend into selling off her uh, inn that she owned. <laughs> and I like that we're just eating the, the fucked up cherry pie. Hey, sassy detective. We are all sassy detective. Uh, congratulations on cracking the case. You've been awarded the title of dun -dun -dun -dun, Puzzle Pro for solving puzzles in lightning speed. Well, I guess they're not ca counting um, golf as a puzzle, but I'll take it. Thank you, game. All right. Who's ready for a trailer for tomorrow's game? Ned reads that as like, uh, uh, okay, I was just chilling, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Eat that humble pie, Marion. Yeah. Screw you, Marion. That's just super messed up. Ties in nicely with the pie talk we all had earlier. Yes, it does. All right. Trailer time. Great news, I think. See, Frank and Joe Hardy have invited me to help them solve a mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train. But not just any train. A train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. Ooh, all meat pie. I've never had it. Sounds good, though. Some people say the train is jinxed. Others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy Boys, but I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know, one way. Frank and Joe Hardy and guests are invited to join Miss Lori Gerard for a journey above aboard Hurley's Comet. 
And last train to Blue Moon Canyon. We get a train mystery, guys. With the Hardy Boys. Oh, it was Jane the Guardian. She was a fake. She was an imposter. Murder on the Orient Express, yes. Gotta go. Yeah, I'm gonna get off in a second too, Chris. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, Nancy's back in the modern timeline, which means we get a cell phone again. We don't have to pay to use the phone. Yeah, Blue Moon Canyon is going to be really fun. Crazy time. Yes! Francie shippers unite. It's going to happen. Two games in a row where the culprit was a Jane. I have to feel like somebody's ex was named Jane on the development team, right? <laughs> like, that's the only reason you have two games in a row where the bad guy's name is Jane. Uh, yeah. This game is pretty fun, though. It's definitely heavier on mini games than puzzles than, say, Blackmore Manor that has a lot more, like, intensive puzzles, but it's a nice change of pace. Um, and Last Train has a lot of really cool puzzles, too, so that will be tomorrow, and I'm very excited about it. Putting the plot of the games angrily and going, screw you, Jane, I hate you. Yeah, she, like, she, like, broke his heart. Sure, it sure is a wild coincidence. Jane's Avo got it. Until tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Paul. I'm gonna get off in just a second. I wish I could say I was about to get up and um, get the video posted for tonight, but who knows if it's even uh, rendered. It failed twice, so... Keep an eye out for that uh, video because it's gonna be a new Beyond Belief video and it should be fun though. So not tonight, tomorrow morning it'll be up. And then I'll be back on here live at... Six. So that'll be fun. Hot keys, come on. There we go. Be in chat again tomorrow, hopefully with updates on the cake recipe. Yes, let me know. I'm very excited um, to do the video. Uh, I'll have to shout you out when I do it so that I can we can get the the whole thing down. Appreciate it. Well, it hasn't failed yet, the render, but it still has an hour and a half to go, which is lame, but oh well. All right, I will say good night to everybody. Good night, Josh. Good night, everybody. Yeah, look out for the video, and then I'll be back tomorrow at 6 on chat. I promise I will not uh, give you any false hope about uh, noontime streams. I'll make sure that it knows that it's going live at the right time. Good night. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.